come with us now, if you dare, down a rickety staircase into a dank, dark basement. What awaits the Saturday Night Freak Show? <laughs> Welcome back to the Saturday Night Freak Show podcast. We're a movie review podcast that comes your way every Saturday, whether you're ready for it or not. In our quest for total world domination, why don't you do, do us a favor, head on over to wherever you found us, give us a like, a star rating, or hit the subscribe button. That would help mm-hmm. even better. Give yes. us a review. All of that stuff helps us get found by more people like yourself and we'll spread the word of the saturday night freak show which is you're gonna be listening to the internet radio superstars holly sean michaela and i'm colin and breathe tonight, colin breathe <laughs> just, well you Colin's know racing sober. through it now totally so yeah this That's, is the, like oh it's all there this is the caffeine wow. freak show yeah i know i was like you're moving at a decent clip right now yeah. i know and then it all hit the brakes so and now we're <laughs> now we're gonna we're gonna bring it back home now we're gonna bring it home. <laughs> we're gonna slow it down oh and we're gonna we're gonna say tonight we watched the movie that was chosen by <laughs> all, us. Of us. all of us. What? It's a, it was a, a, on, a, on a very special freak yeah, show very field special trip. Episode. Special episode. Well, because yeah. these kind of horror movie events only come around every so once in a great while, mm-hmm. we figured not only did two years ago we go see it. I can't mm-hmm. believe that was two years. ago. I know. Yeah. It feels like it it's was crazy, yesterday. right? Damn. Right. Well, this year we went and saw. Killer Clowns from Outer Space. No, wrong uh, movie. All right. <laughs> uh, we saw Wrinkles. Sort, sort of. Clown. That's what we saw. <laughs> we, uh, what's other like uh, horror movie event of the year? It Chapter Two. I mean, Child's Play. This is. I was going to say, the, there another, Oh, you're saying what's the other yeah, one? Yeah, was there year? another oh, Pet um, Cemetery? Pet Cemetery. Yeah, Pet Cemetery. Yeah. cemetery. Yeah. Child's Play. All remakes. That's what I we're saying. I forgot about all bad. Black Boy. Christmas. Wait, yeah, wait for <laughs> the Black <laughs> Christmas episode. Yeah. Summer it's coming up. Okay. Midsummer was like a different type of event. Yeah. Okay, so yeah, well, the movie we're talking about is It, Chapter 2. Mm-hmm. We all saw it. You have probably, you saw it about a week ago. So just uh, for a spoiler warning, mm-hmm. yeah. we are going to talk uh, at length about uh, the movie, changes from the novel. We're going to talk about the ending and all that stuff. Probably so. some comparisons to the 1991, maybe a little of bit course. too here and there. So all It content is going to be spoiled. Yeah, That's all right. It all the yeah, time. All It is none of, it's all on the table. And this so. is a sequel. We should put the link to the first uh, part of this yes. that we did two years ago. Mm, yes. Yeah. That one's yeah. kind of messy, though. We were weaving in and out of the... Because well, we, we were the, talking about two movies. Yeah, yeah. We were, that was my fault. I learned from my mistake. <laughs> Never do that again. We did not do it this time. <laughs> Never not, do that again. We're going to refer to the TV version, but we're not going to like yeah. review it. Correct. No. Yeah. Even though I watched it recently. I couldn't. I I <laughs> I, was I did my homework on this one, guys. I you watched did. the It one, and I not only did I watch the nineteen ninety one, not only did I watch, I watched it on TV. Yeah, um, so mm-hmm. it was a good With five hours of my she day. Did. Oh, wow, um, oh, and then I watched commitment. Uh, the the original as well, mm-hmm. and then um, once again, I tried to read the fucking book, man. I cannot. I just can't. Mm-hmm. I can't with a book, man. It's a good book. I try, and I just. Good you get the book. audio. Book. I believe it's. A I good think book. it took me two years to read that book. Forty hour audio. I know. That's a lot. Yeah. It's a long book. I like. I am a fan it? of the book. So As that's what right. I too. Um, you are too. Oh yeah, I love the book. Okay, book's so, great. So you guys have book baggage. Does this? Yep. Yeah. Does this create a problem? Okay, so Michaela has not read the book. I have not read the book. And Holly hasn't read. Right. It. I have read uh, two scenes that are in the movie in the book. That's okay. about it. All right. <laughs> so. I assume you know, we're probably going to have to use this as context for how it colored your movie viewing. Right. Absolutely. right? Helping or hurting. Yeah. So we've all seen the 99, uh, 90s version. Yes. 1990. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Um, all right. So uh, how, how how do we uh, want to begin this? Uh, where do you want to? Because, I mean, I could. I'm curious to find out what you guys thought about it, but that's usually not the way that we do our thing. Yeah. Because we talk about the movie, then we, we tell you at the end how we actually thought. I mean, about our it. opinions are going to come out either way. They're going to yeah. I have, so. It's going to be fair. I have an idea something. what Holly thinks. I have no idea what you two think. And <laughs> oh, I think everyone fine. here knows right. what I feel about the <laughs> All right. movie. Because so. we've had to hear you mumble about it for a couple weeks. I've now, been so. mumbling and grumbling for a couple weeks now about this movie. <laughs> so Sean hated it. I, uh, hey, yeah. And you saw it twice. You saw it twice. I, saw it twice. I like the way that. Well, okay, sometimes yeah, you have so to do that. You watch it the first time and you hate yeah, it. You get over that initial shock. Yeah. Yeah. And then I watched it again because I'm like, all right, I gotta, I gotta go cement my feelings for this movie. So I'm gonna go see it again because mm-hmm. maybe, you know, mm-hmm. maybe I missed something. Maybe it plays better when you know you kind of know what's coming. Right. But you uh, also did not like the first one. I also, yeah, I did not recommend the first one. Although by comparison, it's a. Uh, that's uh, <laughs> far superior, and I that, would. That was hilarious. I went back and listened to that. You're like, and I would recommend it. And we're like, what? What you just sat here the whole time bashing it? Like, how would you? Would you actually tell someone to go see it? 
No, no, no. I wouldn't. Yeah. So that's okay. <laughs> yeah, you, you <laughs> backtracked on that. Yeah. Yeah. All right. But so mm-hmm. you're definitely not telling people to go see this one. Man, we're getting to wrap-ups real early. Mm-hmm. I mean, I feel I mean, like this yeah, is such yeah. a colossal thing, at least yeah. at the time we're recording this. If you listen to this five years in the future, that might be a different. Uh, this is like the marketing push for this movie true. has been absolutely insane. Yeah. yeah. I don't yes. know how much you guys have followed it online, but they actually, um, uh, Andrea Subasati, who's the executive editor of Rue Morgue, her and a bunch of other similar people in the horror industry got flown out to California to go to the It experience and stay there for like a number of days. And they got all, they got to go to parties. They got to swag bags. They got, she went to like, they basically created the whole carnival from this movie in like Mm -hmm. someplace in California. And then they had like, um, all kinds, just kinds of, they called it like experiences where you'd go through Mm -hmm. a set and Mm -hmm. all this crazy stuff. And she was there for like five days doing this. It was all, that sounds kind of awesome. I know. That's what I'm saying. Like she got a free, like it themed vacation just because she works in the horror industry. That's freaking Like they did that, but they did that for a ton of people. It was her and like 20 other people that they did that Well, that's what makes it an event. Like their movie. Well, it's <laughs> it's you know I mean they're trying. It's the PR you know push for a gigantic yeah. summer movie. I right. mean the budget on this. Did we look up Is budget of the first seventy one versus million? Seventy million. It's How much was the first more, one? Like sixty. Okay. So it's about mm-hmm. pretty much the same, but the yeah. marketing push for this movie is—I mean, the first one had a big marketing push too, but this yeah. one has been like relentless marketing. Yeah. Well, and it had the, what's the biggest horror opening ever? The, the first, first one. one yeah. The first one. So yeah, mm-hmm. they're putting those dollars behind this one to mm-hmm. be like, hey, you like that? Mm-hmm. We got another one. Yeah. yeah. Just wait in two years when they come out with it three. Well, I mean, this is Prequel. the thing. I I'll guess, go see it. And probably <laughs> everybody. Pennywise. I guarantee it. I'm calling it Pennywise. I, just called Pennywise. That is legit. It. And it's a prequel. That's I, absolutely legit. I'd go see it. <laughs> yeah. I'm also waiting for the Netflix series, which is the six hour super cut. Man, I am so I'll done. watch it. <laughs> yeah. I'm curious how it works when it's all edited together. If it does work that way. Yeah. If they know? can't it, work any less. As far as I'm concerned. Well, you could put it in, I suppose you could put it in the order of the book. Okay, so the book, yes. it, it intercuts between uh, 1958 and 1985. Yes. I believe. It's a 30-year gap, right? In the movies, they moved it up to 80, 89 and uh, 2016, Yes, I think is the gap. Um, so after the first movie, you know, so in the movie, it basically takes all of the the kid stuff out of uh, the, the, the chopped up order that it appears in the book made that into one movie yep. boom there's it chapter one it does well so then they're like well shit we got to do it chapter two of course all the actors grow up in the uh in the intervening years yep. yes but i guess what i expected from the announcement of this movie right was that okay now we're going to have the adult movie yeah that is what we're doing with it chapter two but did they do that see i i saw so much press about like the like CGI de aging and stuff that I knew the kids were going to be in it quite a bit. Sure. If they were doing that to yeah. them, yeah, yeah. which I thought looked that's bad. Not, that wasn't any promotional stuff. Like seeing the kids, it was just all. Well, adults. we knew that they were in it, but sure. I There's assumed clips in of some them kind in the trailer. of is there? Oh yeah, yeah. a couple some yeah. flashbacks couple. or something. Right. But it's a lot of the movie. Yeah, it is, it is a lot of that the, the movie. kids are in. A uh, lot. I don't know if that was a good idea or not. Well, you always said when the first one came out, why they didn't shoot, why they didn't cast the adults then and shoot. Yeah, uh, back I guarantee back. because the the studio said let's wait and see how this oh, first yeah, one I does. Probably, You're right. I don't Probably think they so. were going to upfront commit to two gigantic movies like that. No. They didn't know how it was going to do. Cuz don't you guys remember when we recorded the episode that movie was estimated to do like 20 million its opening weekend and it did like almost 100. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, like they like really didn't have any faith like in that, that movie. Yeah. yeah. But it had to the uh, the tracking beforehand. I mean, I'm saying after production, but mm-hmm. once they start releasing trailers and you know the social media mm-hmm. swell and they go by like uh, page views on an IMDb page. The right. movie, you know, all that stuff gets tracked. They had to. They knew that. They like, knew. Yeah. Oh, this is gonna. It's there's a swell happening here. But then they were still like, let's not sign any contracts until after that the studio thing is performed. execs for you, man. That's yeah. you know. So then, after it performs well, then you got to go around lock everybody down for mm-hmm. like it chapter two, <laughs> and well, now we should probably write this second movie, huh? Yeah. Oh, they hired uh, Gary Doberman. He's the writer who you do not care for, Colin. No, no. <laughs> he was uh, the guy. Well, I mean, he's basically James Wan's go-to uh, writer for all of these, like the Nun and the. Uh, did he write the Curse of La Llorona? He wrote. He wrote and directed probably. Annabelle Creation. I think he wrote all three Annabelle movies. He was the showrunner on the Swamp Thing TV show that oh, uh, really? that got killed, and they fucked up my favorite comic character. Sorry, but Colin. the guy who played Alec Holland, who becomes a Swamp Thing, is Stan Uris in. Uh, oh, really? In it, yeah. So oh, it's, nice. it's, you know, yeah, okay. Yeah. yeah, older Stan Uris. Yeah, 
And uh, keeping with uh, Warner Brothers, uh, you know, track record for taking their horror film directors and then launching them off into mm-hmm. their DC big superhero movies. Yeah. I hear the director here, Andy, uh, uh, Andy Mush- Muschietti. 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 Yeah. Mm-hmm. Is on his way to doing The Flash. Oh, really? Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. We'll have fun. Yeah. Somebody, somebody yeah, will right. make that movie eventually because it's mm-hmm. been like in yep. production or in uh, yeah, just in, yeah. But it never years. had one of the, the horror Warner horror guys. True. Yeah. Well, because who did Shazam? That was Sandberg, David Sandberg, who did Lights uh, Out and uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, they really are just graduating them from the horror to the superheroes, aren't they? Yeah. Jeez, mm-hmm. what a weird. That's a weird what transition. A weird level up. <laughs> <laughs> what a weird career That's path a weird transition. These days. Yeah. That's- At least Colin Trevorrow's not doing anything anymore. Yeah. Let's keep it that way. Yeah. Well, hopefully we didn't just I'm, Kurt jinx that by saying that. I'm going to try and work in a jab on Colin Trevorrow like every episode. Do it. I'm here for it. I think that's what I'm going to do. <laughs> that guy yeah, deserves it. <laughs> anyway. I, if we're, if we're going to jump into this, I, I, the, the first thing that really irked me going into this is right when we find out that this movie is basically like, Oh, you think you know what happened that summer? You don't remember all this other shit that happened this summer? Like, mm-hmm. I was like, really? We're doing that? Like, it felt like when they write in uh, in a horror movie series, when they write in a family member that yes. never existed beforehand. Yes. That's kind of what that's that felt kind of like. how it felt. Yeah, it felt very unnatural. Yeah, I mean, there is there it, again. We got to go back to the book. There is a part that is in the book, though, right? It's not. I don't think it's what, it's what part? the um, the other stuff. Yeah. Like when they have a fight and they um, aren't I mean, there for the together well, yeah, for the rest watch, of the summer. Watching it, I assumed I was like, "All right, I guarantee this is shit that's that's in the book. I guarantee that they're." I mean, we didn't point. see not every single all of thing. It. Not, not all of it, it. no. Because okay, it that's, makes some significant yeah. boneheaded changes where I was just like, okay. Well, one of the things is, uh, um, well, okay. Well, I guess we're sticking with the existing topic. The uh, idea of going back and like showing you all of these, I'm like what does it i mean like i was perfectly fine that they had omitted some stuff like the there is a scene in the book where they uh do have like an underground clubhouse they Mm -hmm. all go into it they start a fire because they read somewhere that uh, native americans would have a vision quest Mm -hmm. and by doing that the whole thing fills up with smoke only two of them are able to actually stand it you know because they do close the Mm -hmm. lid on the the thing and they have a vision of like pennywise crashing to earth you know millions of years ago Mm -hmm. that's basically it um, and then it's like he is a killer clown every- from outer space, huh? That's what I'm saying. <laughs> That's what I'm fucking saying. Oh, I'm watching this. I'm like, yeah, yeah. I get it now too. Yeah. I, I, was like, get I was like, did you guys yeah. seriously not get my joke? Yeah. No, nope. like, we didn't get the yeah. joke. Well, yeah. fuck, <laughs> listeners. I hope you got it. I hope Sometimes someone it- is on my team. <laughs> Jesus, it helps to explain the joke. Is this on? Like Jesus Christ. <laughs> Uh, that's that's fine. Thank, very good. I just need to translate you. your Thank joke you. for you. Apparently, <laughs> uh, well, over my head. My question is: by putting these scenes with the kids into the second half of the movie, it does two things. I think one, it uh, it negates any forward momentum that you're getting, really getting to know the adults. Yeah. Because every time you're, but like, we already know them. Like with it's the same kids. Like it's just like I don't. That's but, the problem I have with the 1990 movie is how much time it spends on what the adults are up to I that I don't that. give a fuck about. I agree like, with that. I think that I actually think the first act of this movie where it's the montage of catching up with all the adults and where they're at in their lives, that's the best pacing in the whole movie. And I'll then see, after that, it goes I to shit. I hated rocketed it. through that. Yeah, yeah. I was like, then, man, I need more that's time what I want. here. I don't need more time with the, <laughs> oh, the same no. characters from the previous movie. I don't need to know that much about but, their lives. But we need to get to know like yeah, those what's happened actors. happened 30 years? Yeah, we need to get to know those actors as those characters. I, yeah. Yeah. I don't feel but it. But also, because yeah, I don't... We have uh, three hours of watching them on screen. We're going to get to know them. Like... <sighs> Uh, no, that I, was like that, was that quick. 1990 movie, man. It spends way too much time on architecture and fucking covers of magazines and writing books and shit that just is not important. It doesn't really it. matter to the story. So I agree it's with that. Yeah, they they spend a ridiculous amount of time in the TV movie. Mm-hmm. It's it's un, almost unbearable. Mm-hmm. I don't. It's aside from like who do we get uh, like any time with Bill at the beginning and then everyone else is just immediately on the phone yeah. call like I don't know what these people are like when they're not facing down having to go back to Derry question one who's the main character of the movie Pennywise yeah he's not basically there. but it, I don't even he, I don't even feel like it's Pennywise though. it's not I don't think there is like one it's uh is it I feel Chastain? like it, I feel like it switches halfway through I feel like it it's Bill at first and then it's Jessica Chastain, and at some point it's fucking Ben. ben. Yeah, yeah, I feel like They're it like changes. The three, mm-hmm. but 
I, yeah. It's not Mike. The book it's always gives Mike. you. Here's the thing I think that you need to do for like a narrative film, right? It's like when you start off and it's like, this is the moment that Bill lost his uh, brother. Mm. And that has haunted him. And that becomes like the thing that drives like his entire psychology. Mm-hmm. Well, then you have to kind of, you have to resolve that, right? That's where you, and this movie to its credit does do that, but that's like the arc, right? It's like, he has to get over, yeah. uh, you know, the death of his brother. This isn't, wasn't that, that's, that's the arc of the first one too, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> they're following Bill. <laughs> yeah. 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 Well, the first one I did yeah, kind of feel like Bill was a little more on. central yeah. Yeah. in yeah. this one, Definitely. which I'm like. Even though you've got James McAvoy, it was like, you know, are they trying to make it's like, I feel like I need a character to go like, OK, this is the guy who's going to have the fucking plan to, you know, whatever. Yeah. But this one is a complete ensemble where it gives everybody is about as much equal time. And so I think the byproduct of that is it just kind of feels like the movie's swinging without actually like, you know, connecting yeah. and mm-hmm. landing somewhere and picking a fucking lane. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's like, well, we want to play fair with everybody. But I'm like, you got to, you know, somewhere direct it and have everything coalesce. Yeah. You know, uh, see, I'm fine with that because my biggest narrative. my biggest criticism of Stranger Things, well, one of the bigger ones is that like Will Byers is the most passive character in that entire like series. Like he's he's the one that like his whole story is what kicks off the entire universe of that franchise. But ever since he's like first season, he's in the upside down the whole time. He's basically non-existent. Second season, he's like touching the back of his neck a bunch. And third season, he's mad. No one wants to play D and D for one episode. Like that kid doesn't exist at all. in that's that, that story yeah, because anymore. he's the MacGuffin. He's the thing we have yeah. to go get yeah. because he's mm-hmm. gone. We have to go right. get him and his best friend, whatever the hell yeah. the kid is, who's in, uh, it also Finn Wolfhard, Finn Wolfhard. He's Finn like, Wolfhard whose he's character like, name is what in Stranger Things? Dear Mike? God, is it Mike? Mike, Mike. I think he's Mike. No, yeah, I have yeah, no idea. Mike. Yeah, is it Mike? Mike's the near the guy that called them all back. Oh no, in, in, no, no, no. In, he's uh, talking about Stranger Things. Oh, Finn Wolfhard's <laughs> like, character is Mike. What are you talking about? <laughs> yes, yes, you're right. You're right. Yeah. No, he's like he's like the fucking he's like the Doug in the Hangover. The whole movie is about rescuing Doug, but Doug doesn't really exist. I know, but like. Yeah. We've had three TV seasons of this character still existing in the world of the yeah. franchise, but doing nothing and yeah. being like well, non existent. You know, that's because after his use was used up, so after they should have just season, killed him then. You know, him, they really should have just then killed you're him. Done. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> He's that's been what I'm rescued. Saying. Okay. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think uh, so. Not having a, 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 you know, I mean, again, if you guys agree with this, not having a central character kind of harms the film, and it's, mm-hmm. you know, I think so. Yeah, absolutely. forward propulsion. Absolutely. Um, that's where it starts to like, especially in the middle where it starts to feel long because you're just wandering yeah. with, you know, you're not sticking with anybody. You're just no, wandering around oh the place. God. <laughs> <laughs> as soon as fucking Mike is like, no, now it's time that we all have to go on our own journey and find yeah. our thing. I was like, Jesus Christ, really? Yep. This is what we're doing now? Got to find your artifact. Yeah. Well, this is, I don't know if they had to go find artifacts, but. Yeah, they had to find artifacts. I mean, basically, if, if you were going to do a straight adaptation of the book, the beats that you have to hit is they. All receive the, the, you know, we find out what they're doing now. They all receive phone calls. They all go back. They meet at the Chinese restaurant. They have a little party, get together. They find uh, there's an attack by it, a hallucinatory attack by it at the restaurant. Mm-hmm. Then they all split up and go wandering through to basically rekindle memories about the town. In the book, this is done to provide more of the what happened in the past. Yeah. But we yeah. already got that information. The first time in the first movie, right. in chapter yeah. one. Right. So this should just be like Pennywise attacking them as adults. Yes. Mm-hmm. And then they eventually come back together. And then we do see him attack. Everyone gets their own individual. For what you're saying about there not being a main character, every character does get their own scene of individually confronting him. Actually, Richie doesn't. Yeah, he does. Paul Bunyan. Is that that whole scene. He who, has a very, it's a, that's a very important scene in the movie. Eddie. Eddie. One of them, Eddie's, Eddie's the mom. leper in the basement. They all yeah, have a scene. I thought one of them had like a, because one of them, who the fuck was I sitting there thinking about it? It's been a couple days since I saw it. I thought one of them had like, they had a flashback of when it attacked them, but didn't actually get attacked. Yeah, it's in Ben. The, maybe it's Ben. Ben has the flashback. But, but nothing not, actually nothing happens, happens to him, to him in, in the, real yeah, life. Okay, yeah. there it was. Mm-hmm. That's it. Yeah. I thought that was weird. I'm like, I, you know, because that way you can't separate the two right. narratives of kid and, and adult. Yeah. What I had a problem with, with the flashbacks, is because the first flashbacks show them after they supposedly killed it. And then after they, what, Ben and Richie have the, uh, or um, Bill and Richie have the fight and he punches him. And so every flashback after that feels like it is attacking the kids 
after they killed him. Or at least yeah. that's what it felt to me. Yeah. yeah. And so I'm like, wait, is this happening after you guys did this? Because it all feels like it happened after they killed it. So well, I, remember, that made it feel weird. I, mean, I didn't even think about, about it that way. Yeah. If you're talking yeah, about... Like in the moment. Well, even chronologically then, because in the first movie, he doesn't... It's Eddie or Richie. One of Finn Wolfhard says that nobody has, you know, he hasn't seen the clown, right? Was it him? Yes. Okay. Okay. But in this, it turns out that he did see a giant Paul, Bly- Paul Bunyan. Or, uh, see, I'm yeah, all fucked that's, up. I can't that's, remember yeah. that's that was fucking posturing. Or- He's just like, that's Richie's whole thing is having like this fake peacocking kind of persona, yeah. like, and never owning up to what he is actually feeling. Yeah. That's been his journey from the jump. That is mm. true. Well, I think the downside of these extended flashback scenes not only does it you know kind of stunt the adult story mm. but it also plays in a in a realm where like there we know that nothing is going to happen to these kids yeah right but i don't think that's what it's trying to do so, i i think the whole point of the flashbacks is that their memory is coming back to them as they're experiencing things and I don't think we need to see those scenes. We don't need to see every memory that comes back to them like this movie does. Especially because it's basically going to be Pennywise yeah. jumping out and doing something. But we yeah. know that they never get caught. Right. But yeah. but Or they never get killed. Right. But we're supposed to be taking it from their perspective of their memories are coming back to them now that they're back in Derry. So they're re-experiencing Maybe all these things they the, forgot. the problem with not intercutting the two movies. Because those comes scenes through. You could have just intercut scenes from the first movie. Right. You know, that mm-hmm. comes through way better in a second viewing, because that's what I was thinking about mm-hmm. in the second viewing. It's like, oh, the, it's their perspective. To, I don't think yeah. the, the movie kind of puts that forth enough, but it no, did. it's not well written enough. No, to be 100 percent clear so mm-hmm. in some scenes, it's clear that's what's happening. In others, right. it's not. Yeah. yeah. So. And I think that's the problem I had with it. It does come across a lot better in the second viewing. I'm like, OK, I understand that it is coming back to them now, mm-hmm. but it's it's you know it kind of like we said it's underwritten because there weird. are some scenes where they really like heavy heavy handedly be like oh I totally forgot that and then yeah. they have a flash but like other scenes it's not that subtle or it's not that you know heavy handed mm-hmm. so it's just the, there's just not a good consistency in the writing mm. to make that a thread you is easy to follow yeah, you know what I'm saying like agree. it's a it's a writing flaw I think and it might be an editing flaw a little bit too I, like I think some of the editing did not help the we- the editing exposed the weaknesses in the script I think in this movie I'll agree with that mm. that's a good yeah that's, anybody yeah. disappointed we only got one beep beep Richie we got I one. I don't really care about that. Got one. Yeah, it's only if you're a fan of the book, <laughs> yeah. I suppose, right? But I mean, I thought that their treatment of Mike Hanlon, like I was actually kind of upset by it. I because, hate Mike. Well, that's, I get that's right? what I'm saying. Like right? they made me hate the yeah. character in a way that I didn't in the, any previous version. Right, of this. and you shouldn't. You <laughs> yeah, really should. Because shouldn't. okay, so this is what happens. Sort of spoilers, right? We're supposed to believe that Mike Hanlon, in the time between uh, the first movie and this one, uh, he never leaves Derry. So he goes on this thing where he researches the origins of it. To do so, he goes and talks to this Native American tribe that lives outside of Derry and are not affected by the, the clown's magic. Right. And he finds a ritual that they performed. I'm not sure because clearly it didn't work, but that's just how you trap the deadlights, the three orbs of energy that the yes. clown actually is. And so Mike basically brings everybody together with this stolen uh, Native American uh, urn, ritual yeah. urn, and says, we're all going to go down into the sewers and we're going to fight this thing. But turns out this is all a lie. Because he just needed them to actually believe that they could beat the clown, yeah. and they need. So he figures that if he gets seven people together and they all believe that the clown is small, that they'll be able to force the clown into its own, you know, a space that you know, a small space, and then it'll be tiny, and then they'll be able to fight it. Yeah, this is his plan. But there's this part where it's like he it lies to them. Yeah. Then the entire way through the movie. Yeah. Mm-hmm. In order to try and get them down into the, into the sewers. Mm-hmm. I think I thought that was underhanded and like, Jesus Christ. I mean, I know it's a right. kind of a suicide mission to begin with. Right. right. But <laughs> I think that once again, I think that they were trying to say this, but they didn't say it well enough uh, or hit it hard enough. I think they were trying to imply that he has some sort of like 
almost like space madness type thing going on from being like in dairy this mm-hmm. whole time and being like kind of isolated and living in that attic. I wondered like a hermit. that too. It does I, not come across. No, but I wondered that too. There was like one scene where it came across, the and then they never touched dosed, on it again. Uh, uh, yeah, he, like yeah. poisoned Bill with yeah. Uh, yeah. acid. Or yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah the, he, I got like very Matt Damon and like Interstellar vibes from a couple scenes, <laughs> oh, but like, yeah. but it wasn't an. It wasn't consistent enough to, or he, even if they just would have put in a line, he'd be like, I've been alone for a long time yeah, yeah, or something, yeah, you know? Like, seem like, yeah, he was yeah, 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 yeah. That when, would have not turned you against that character yeah. as much. When that turn right? happens, man, I fucking hated him. I'm like, you, and, and there, and the moment feels like, they all hate him too because they're like they they're like fuck you, Mike. Like yeah. they really yeah. like he brought done. them down there with no yeah. good plan. Yeah. on what to do. I mean, that's basically pulls the rug out front. I'm under. I'm going like, well, I brought you down here. Yeah, and then I hope that we'll be able to fight it. And I don't really know how. Actually, after all, yeah, like, that what? made me hate that guy. Yeah, I didn't think the uh, Isaiah Mustafa. I didn't think he was um, terribly good in this movie. Anyway, he has a really good voice. Like he should just narrate things and yeah. maybe do audio books because he has a very like booming, like good, like especially for telling like a like a like a narrative story like the the whole Native American ritual. Like yeah. Yeah. narrating things like that, he was really good about. But other than that, I feel like he kind of did the same thing over and over yeah. again. And just yeah, kinda, he he's wasn't not, the he's best not, choice. He's not very expressive. No, no. not no. With not at all. He is, it's With a, yeah. A little- it's a little much with his yeah. voice. He is like you yeah. said, but not. He's with, better when you yeah. can't see him. Yes, he is. He really is. <laughs> the ritual of chud. Mm-hmm. Of chud. Yeah, not to be confused with chud, the cannibalistic the humanoid chud. underground yeah. dwellers. Yeah. That's how I would say it. The chud. Um, the chud ritual. I thought uh, Bill Hader and James Ranscom were really good in this movie. That guy was surprisingly really good. good. Yeah, they were my favorite part of this. Yeah, movie. they are the also, best part. hands down. But because they're also the the they're, those are the parts that have the comedic bit so right. you will like them more because yes. they're funny they're the yes. levity but also the... to contrast they did really well with the dramatic part yeah Bill Hader that's did. why yeah. i loved it so much because yeah. they did so well at both mm-hmm. yes they did they it really well. did almost and them being so funny is i to me uh almost a detriment to some of the scenes that they're in because in scenes where you're i guess you're supposed to be uh feeling something well no no <laughs> like when eddie gets stabbed in the face like that the whole thing is played for comedy yeah like I should be like scared I wasn't for sure Eddie if that at this was point. really when I was watching. I wasn't sure if that was really happening or not. I was yeah. like, is this like an it mirage or is this like actually? Yeah, ba- I didn't know at first. It should have been horrific, but I was like, this is funny. Yeah, I don't it should have been. Like, horrific. <laughs> there was a really yeah. good prop work on that. Did you notice it really when he was. opened his mouth? You could see the blade in his mouth. That's yeah, what I was looking was really for. Yeah, you could see it at first, and I was like, oh shit, that's pretty cool actually. Yeah, <laughs> but that scene pretty cool. ends up being really funny. And I'm just like, ah, should it be? I don't think <laughs> it should be. Yeah. I was thinking the same thing. But yeah. I thought it's a great scene played for comedy, but I'm yeah. like, I don't know if Compared this is Compared to some of the other comedy in this movie, that was pretty great. Like, so there's no, some again, bad comedy great. There's some really movie. terrible comedy. There's some things that hit with a fucking The needle drop? The, the, the needle what drop What the hit. fuck was all that about? I, I, thought, I thought I stroked I into know. a Deadpool movie for a second. I was like, right. what the? F- that's a Deadpool it's, joke. There's that a scene where, was it Pennywise throws up on... The leper, yeah. The leper, yeah. leper throws up on... Eddie. Eddie, Eddie, thank you. Mm-hmm. And uh, all of a sudden, the soundtrack just goes to full blast. Angel of the morning. Yeah. For Where a did second, that come from? For like a second. Yeah. I don't know Where what it has to out. do with anything. I don't know what it is related to. It's just like all of a sudden now we're gonna blast. Was no one in my the theater laughed. Was no that one. everyone was just like, "What the?" Was fuck? that song played in the first movie? No. Did I miss not, like? Not did I miss I, a connection there? No, See, that's I what I'm think wondering. It was, did I miss a connection? Yeah, it was out of nowhere. Yeah, out of nowhere. Weird. I was like, it felt like a Deadpool gag, and I was like, "What is happening?" I thought maybe that there was a you know there's a problem with the movie. I wrote that. That was like the worst thing. It's like, wait, whoa, what? yeah. what's going on? And only for a second. Yeah. It's like two seconds. Somebody yeah. hit a button a- up in the projection booth. and you yeah. Know. yeah. It was a blink and you miss it sort of like thing, which is also like, so what was the point then? If yeah. it was that quick. Yeah, if it was a yeah. joke, I didn't get it. Yeah. yeah. Uh-huh. No, yeah. not at all. I, I think- thought I assumed it had to be a joke because I didn't didn't make sense if it wasn't to me. But even but even then, like, what's the punchline? I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't understand know. at all. It's that's why funny I could, that that song's playing while like, something wa- gross is happening, I guess. I haven't rewatched the first one. And I've actually. I just rewatched it. I don't came out, that. but I was like, there had, there had to have been played yeah. in the first one. It had to have, but no. apparently not. not that I, re- no? I don't remember Definitely. it. No, yeah, I think, I that's think they insane. thought because they have those two and they're so funny, they're gonna try and make everything they do funny. Yeah, and for some reason they they did this. Yeah, and also with the getting stabbed in the face. <sighs> mm-hmm. Yeah, which I did. I did like that scene. I, I liked too. it too. Yeah, yeah, I, think it's I did great, too. Yeah, I did really like that scene. Like what? 
Which the like, tone shifts say, which, in this movie yeah. make no sense. The tone was yeah. I still dug it. The tone was off, but I still dug it. Especially it when he tells him yeah. like, and you should cut that fucking mole off. It's yeah, that pretty. was oh, yeah. fucking. That's yeah. funny. Yeah, yeah. that, yeah. that might have been the only time that I laughed out loud during this. <laughs> oh, movie. the one time, the one that really got me is when Richie's like, "We should head out before this gets as bad as one of the endings of Bill's books." <laughs> yeah, and funny. I was like, "All right, that's, that's, like the dialogue only makes sense in those two's mouths, though, right? Like the kind of like quippiness doesn't really work with any of the other actors, no. you know? Well, just it the only other works too. Yeah. Bill's too serious. Mm-hmm. Beverly's too serious. And but they ben, still give them weird things to say like that. I guess that. it's a thing. Like Bill, Bev, and, and Ben have this kind of romantic triangle going on. Mm-hmm. And so they're the most like, you know, who's the guy who played Ben? I don't think I've ever seen him in a He's, movie. I looked him up. He's been in a ton of TV. Like okay. a ton of TV. I did not TV. recognize him yeah. at all. Did yeah, anybody else find him, his screaming at the end, a little uh, off-putting, a little funny? Kind of. When I he's don't, just yelling, the, the, what, what were they yelling at the end? Uh... The darkness and the light, whatever yeah. it was. Yeah. I don't know. It was fucking goofy. Them standing yeah. there yelling that. That whole thing was goofy. It oh, was but- very goofy. We'll get to that. I <laughs> was I was more caught up in like, how did they shoot this scene? Like that's what I was trying to figure out, like mm-hmm. the practical effects, how those worked and stuff. Oh, yeah. That's why I was There's caught some up really in that good scene. Stuff. Yeah. I mean, again, this movie has since it takes place in nineteen eighty nine, you get to see that cinema marquee with the Nightmare on Old Street Five on it. Yep. Mm-hmm. Like in a predominantly featured. Yeah, and I'm yeah. like, this really does feel like a Nightmare on Elm Street movie. How what yeah. do you think yeah, about it? Does. Um, yeah. That's a good comparison. It's like a super big budget Nightmare on Elm Street movie. Mm -hmm. What did you think of uh, the return of Pennywise? He's the MVP man. Bill Skarsgård fucking crushed it in this movie. I I mean, he was wonderful. Yeah. We just didn't have enough of him. Yeah, exactly. He was, he was like, especially the scene under the bleachers that I was like, give me more of that. That was fantastic. That scene was amazing. That felt like the first one I liked. That was the the scene I thought you could cut. I was actually, I I loved it. It's out of place with the rest of. Out of yeah. place, but that's what I want well, is more out. of that. Yeah, I want those scenes, yeah. those interactions. Like, I, it was cool, all the different monsters that were in this movie. Those were cool, but I like him best when he's that, when he's just yeah. being Pennywise seducing See, children. And, uh, like, that's I, what I like Obviously, best. I have not read the books, so I know mm-hmm. that there's more monster-type creatures in the books, mm-hmm. but I found that to be more distracting than anything. It was more just like, what? The, if It was exhausting to I me. Was I was like, like what the are, fuck is going to happen yeah. next? Like, like, what is this shit? What are we doing here? I don't understand all yeah. the random... And there's no explanation. Like, it's just, it's very random to me. What, the monsters and everything? Yeah. Yeah. The only one. It's very random. The... The only one I thought was good was the um, the old lady when she's stomping out of the kitchen. That one freaked that me one, the fuck out. Yeah. This oh movie, my god, sc- that scared the shit out of me. Yeah, because me too. That, yeah, just the loud stomping and then her coming out of that door. Yeah, I was like, like Jesus. I, even the yeah. second time, I was just like, oh shit. Yeah, I agree. There was two times in this movie that my fitness tracker thought <laughs> I was having a heart attack and told me I needed to like seek medical attention immediately and like it was like try this guided meditation in the meantime. Really? It was, yeah, I was. I there was two scenes that really freaked me the fuck out. It was, well, the Paul Bunyan scene I found to be incredibly stressful. And then, so, but I thought once Paul Bunyan was done running around that it was done. Mm. So when they did that hard cut to him sitting on the shoulder of Paul Bunyan, that got me really good. Cause I was, I was like, oh, okay, it's over. <laughs> and then it wasn't over. And any like Pennywise in the daytime stuff really freaks me the fuck yeah. out. Um, and then the other one was when Bill Skarsgård is just like mostly him putting the makeup on. Oh, yeah. And he was like cutting his face. That was the other time my scene. fitness tracker was freaking the fuck out on me. <laughs> I like that. I think Bill Skarsgård is very good as Pennywise. Mm-hmm. Um, but I was bored with him in this movie because they kept doing the same Well, it's thing. not they him don't, mostly. No, it's, it's a lot of CGI, unfortunately. Sure, but they don't do much with him it doesn't feel like oh see I was loving every scene he, every time he was on screen it was like give me more of that like they, like I said the monsters were cool but you don't get Bill Skarsgård when it's like these other monsters right. so yeah well that's, I'm curious because I was you know I mean you know it's a horror movie right mm-hmm. or is it a horror fantasy did you yeah. find it scary you're saying you did I didn't Absolutely. find it scary at all like no. not a single thing elevated my heart rate <laughs> or made me jump or creep me out the old lady yeah. moment was the only thing other than that nothing they are very good at employing jump scares in this movie, mm-hmm. which, I mean, have their merit, but that's all. That the only thing is. that worked on the theater, I mean, the theater I was with was like decently full. The thing that got them was the gore, especially the shout out to the thing. Uh, oh, yeah. Oh, to the John that, Carpenter movie. That, yeah. When it slithered away, that really mm-hmm. creeped me out. Yeah, the way it slithered away. Of people's faces. Oh, when it comes out of like his eye. Yeah. 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 That was pretty yeah. gross. That was, you yeah. could see people like turning away, like, yeah. Rrr, rrr, yeah. you know, but I didn't see them, you know, reacting really at all to any of the other stuff that mm-hmm. was going on. Mm-hmm. And like I said, I just kind of, uh, you know, 
it was like as a horror movie. It, no, it's a not fail. scary. Oh, see, <laughs> yeah, I disagree. No. I well, I mean, it was but terrifying. I, but I, I'm not really <laughs> it's very stressed out by this movie. <laughs> I'm also not terrified by like a Nightmare on Elm Street five. You know, <laughs> but, true. You know, I mean, so uh, you know, but you can I, still like them even though they're not uh, right scary, yeah. necessarily. Mm-hmm. Scary. But after I watched the first, I watched the first one like a couple of days before we went and saw this in theaters, and I that like that movie really freaked me out too. Especially like the mm-hmm. the scene with the projector in the garage. I don't know how you ever top a scene like that. that so that's the scene. thing. Like that movie had really like. Like well engineered scare scenes, and so like I feel like when you're starting that high, there's no way this movie could have ever done anything as good or better than that. The scenes yeah. in that movie, well, especially because in the first one, I think it does help that you're playing with the psychology of children, and it's easier yes. to scare children and that's very by true. proxy the audience if you're mm-hmm. scaring a kid. But I guess that's the dynamic that I was kind of interested in in the second half of it. It's like now you've got adults. You know, it'd be different if it's us. You know, going like, oh, yeah, this thing scared me when I was a kid, but now I'm a rational adult. Right. And then mm-hmm. this fucking irrational shit is happening right, to you. But you know? they had basically had their memories wiped. Right. That's what we're told. So they come right. back and just weird shit's happening, but they don't understand why it's happening or what it is or anything, because our understanding is like they don't really remember anything. Yeah. And that, I, honestly, that concept was very, very fuzzy to me. It's very unusual. Like, first of all. Do they ever say when exactly they go their separate ways? Like, do they all leave Derry right when they graduate high school, or did they? Yeah, they never. They never specify. Not in this movie, they never specify because they make weird. it seem like they haven't seen each other since they were that age. Mm-hmm. You know yeah. what I mean? But I doubt that's true. They had to have left like yeah, to go that to college. Is not or something. clear at all yeah. in this movie. And then especially like when they react to finding out that Stan's dead, and just how they react to each other. I'm like, you all have a very close feeling with each other when you clearly haven't seen each other in like 20 years. Mm. That seems very odd to well, me. Well, because it was all coming back to them, though, right? That's like what they kept saying, because they couldn't even remember what Stan's name was at first, remember? Yeah. And then, but it was like, he, didn't Mike even say, the more time you spend here, the more clear yeah. it becomes? Mm-hmm. Like, so. Okay, but this is something that I have an issue with, right? And this is something that the movie has changed, that the book did. The idea that I always had was that, the okay, so they move away and they forget Derry, mm-hmm. right? And they sure. become uh, wealthy. Each one of them becomes yes. wealthy, right? Very true. That is in some way part of Pennywise's magic, right? Basically, he just wants them to get the fuck out of and far away from him because they were the only thing that ever hurt him yeah. when he was, you know, uh, in the billions of years that he's been around. Like these fucking seven kids, like actually dealt some kind of injury to them. And so part of his magic is he wipes their memory and he makes them all rich and famous. And so they will just stay where the fuck they are. Did they specify that in the movie? No, because no, no, no. the movie. That was like I, I did not. That whole I was like logic. I did not put like, that together at all. In he movie. wants them back, he and I'm should. like, yeah. why does he want them back? Yeah, you know, he maybe wants, he's just like, I'm gonna go for a round two. Let's yeah, do a he's rematch. Like, You're the yeah. seven that got away, and yeah. I want you know, yeah. I've been waiting all this time, and I'm like, you have misinterpreted yeah. the book. This, okay. <laughs> you've misinterpreted the whole story. Yeah. This yeah. thing hasn't been lying in wait, See, wanting okay. them to come back. It lives in terror of them. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. That's. I okay, I can't, so I can't say any more than that. Yeah. Okay. Then there's a structural issue. The uh, even the the TV movie tried a little bit at this, but uh, in the the novel there are three uh, characters who are not part of the losers club, the losers seven. Now right? this is, and then this, I think you're going into a part which I want to talk about the very beginning of this movie with Bev, and I think that's where you're going. Yeah, Bev, yeah. and well, there's there's Tom Rogan, yep. which is Beverly's husband. There's Audra. Phillips or something, whatever. Yeah. Denbro. Yeah. Uh, Bill's wife. And then there's um, uh, Bowers. Yep. Uh, mm. What's his fucking name? Eddie. Eddie Bowers? No. Henry Bowers. Henry, Henry Bowers. Bowers. Thank you I was very like, much. that's a store. Eddie Bowers is a store. Yeah. <laughs> that's a store. <laughs> Eddie Bowers is a store. So I was right. All yeah, right. I mean, so, you're not wrong. But all of these characters in the novel do serve some kind of a function. Yes. And the filmmakers choose to get rid of them. And by doing that, you know, it's one of these things where it is kind of a house of cards once you start pulling them out yeah you got to come up with another reason you know for people to behave the way that they do so in the book uh tom rogan's uh beverly's abusive husband Mm -hmm. and he follows her back to Derry. yep because she just takes off to go be with their boyfriend bill or whatever right and so he comes back uh audra bill's wife uh who looks just like beverly apparently Uh, she goes back, she goes to Derry looking for Bill. Uh, it basically sends, you know, 
touches Tom Rogan's mind and has him abduct Audra, yeah. take Audra to the sewers. And then this is why the losers like that night, they're like, fuck, he's got Audra. We have to go to the sewers. Yeah. And it's like, oh, that's your motivation. Forget it. Because Tom sees it and drops dead and Audra's put in the dead. Oh, right. Yeah. Right. That, OK, that that makes more sense. More sense. I, I think like, I understand why they didn't do that in this movie. I was though. gonna say it makes more sense, like um, for motivation. Yeah, yeah, but that would have made this a six-hour movie. It, yeah, well, yeah, that's understandable. <laughs> well, that's why they that's so many more out. people that have exactly. to be on screen in this really already is. crowded like, movie. Yeah. In not having them as motivation in the movie, why do we have them in the movie at all? First of all, Bev's husband. They could have taken that whole scene out. Didn't I? Don't think informed her character when he beats her at the beginning of this movie. I don't think it informed her character. I don't think it yeah, helped it her. It informs her character because it's like basically she has issues with she had an abusive dad. She married her dad. Mm-hmm. Yeah, right? yeah, but I mean, there's I, but I it, it doesn't really create an arc because I mean, I mean her end game is she just ends up with fucking Ben. Ben, like there's not really a development there. There's not really like a I I don't know what they're what they're getting at is what I'm saying. I think they had to do it only for that scene at the end when she's in the bathroom stall and like, you know, he's pushing on the door and then it keeps changing the different faces. Mm. I feel like they I feel like they had that yeah, scene and they had I, to reverse engineer. Like uh, I'm not saying it's a good reason. I'm right. just saying I think I'm, that's yeah. the only connection I'm just I can saying make. A three hour movie and things no, you I could agree. lose, that could just go away for sure. real quick. It yeah, was a very long could. and gratuitous beating. That's too. the other problem yeah. I had with it. It was it that was. felt like exploitive. You yeah, know? that's my Definitely. problem with it, especially because like, it doesn't end up being anything, and they really yeah. put a lot into it. And I'm like, why like, are you doing? Why this? are you hammering this home? Well, because you got to She has to be basically in a in a single position, right? She leaves the the her wedding ring on the. She could have just been single. They could have yeah. just she cut it. Just, yeah. She could have just been single. Yeah. She could have just been single. <laughs> right. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's true. That was very inconsequential to the whole movie. It was, yeah. was, it, was it literally just to give her some sort of like current backstory? I think that, and to also make her like a more, even more. I mean, not that she wasn't a sympathetic character, but even more of like a sympathetic character. That mm. makes sense because, like, right, she's going to find redemption by going back and hanging with her friends and yeah. find the lo- true love that she should have. And she could never confront her dad, but now she can right. break free of her uh, dad. Two, you yeah. know, second version of her dad, I guess. I mean, this I mean, is a yeah. lot I'm putting no, on. Yeah. No, I know. So that's probably yeah. what that's, they intended. Sure. I, yeah. I and we can say a lot. We like, I, I, we could say blah blah blah. I guess. I'm like, we're, I think yeah. we can say that a lot for this movie. Yeah. Like whatever their motivation was, whatever their reasoning was, it was not executed well. No, there was no, no. valid reasoning for. No, it wasn't that at worth all. it. No, it wasn't at all. No. Yeah. Okay. Well, then I venture that while we're cutting. Uh, uh, Characters and plot lines. Yeah, then cut, we could cut, cut Henry Bowers. Henry Bowers. Why was he there? Yeah. Why? Yeah. Why? Why no was reason. he there? <laughs> no I mean, reason I, at all. Jesus yeah. Christ. Well, and I got a little concerned because in the in the 1991 he talks to Pennywise in the moon. Yes, he and does. They, and that's real fucking <laughs> weird and really stupid. Yeah. And it just takes you like you're like. Oh, this is this kind of movie, and you're immediate. That's that's like probably if you're still with the movie at that point, that's mm-hmm. when you turn on it. <laughs> but I was like, oh, like I got a little nervous when he like went up to the window in his room. I was like, oh no, don't do it, don't do yeah, it. I liked I all was, those scenes, yeah. you know, in the in the hospital, yeah. and I, I especially liked Hockstetter's corpse. I liked the Hockstetter's yeah. like driving him around. Yeah. I thought that and was some cool. Of that was like, <laughs> which is cool. Kind of dead in the passenger seat until yeah. Henry gets in, and then the the. the the ghost kind of wakes up like right. now it's a puppet and now yeah. the strings are attached. That felt, that felt like an 80s movie to me. I was like, we're watching like a Night of the Creeps type movie right now. Yeah. I was like, I love it. I was yeah. loving that stuff. Yeah. But that's why it's so weird because I'm like, I like what I'm watching, but what's the point? Yeah. Yeah. What's the point? Yeah. What's, yeah. The, point? Yeah. what's, yeah. what's yeah. the point? I did think the casting for Henry Bowers was really good though. I thought the casting for all of them oh, was yeah. ex- across well, the board was good. Besides Mike. But yeah. everyone else was fantastic. Yeah. Mike was okay. okay. I'm, uh, I thought Mike, the, the actor was okay. It was just the fucking character. I don't know. I thought he I thought he chewed it a yeah. lot. But the uh, the Middle thing way. that Henry Bowers is supposed to do is he stabs, I believe, or he breaks Eddie's arm again because yep. Eddie breaks his arm in, when he's a kid. Henry Bowers breaks his arm again and attacks him. And then I believe he stabs puts, Mike so puts bad. Mike in the hospital. Mike is in the hospital and can't go down. And Mike is not at the end of it. So there's not seven of them. Not even these. Yeah. So basically, there's five when they it get has managed to take out Stan Uris and Mike. Uh, so there's only five of them left to actually go down and, and and fight it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, but if you don't put Mike in the hospital, then what is the point of Henry Bowers? Yeah. No, there's no point. To- Just that scene with um, fucking, is it Richie? 
Eddie, which scene? Eddie just, just, in the this face? Is just the scene yeah. with Eddie in the bathroom. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's yeah, the again, only. It's again. inconsequential. Yeah. Yeah, I know it it's is. a great scene, but it doesn't matter. Yeah, yeah. It doesn't yeah. matter. I know. I think that's yeah. a. This is the problem of Gary Dauberman, screenwriter. Yeah. He writes it's, cool scenes, yeah. and then it's like, hey, it's a movie. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He hasn't yeah. figured out like that. You know, there has to be a motivation for everything that you do. I'm sure he has it in yeah. his mind. But it's like this stuff does not need to be there, and you don't need to have a three fucking hour long movie yeah. right. when you could just and and again I was saying that you could trim a lot of for me personally. No, I, I know so I love the Pennywise stuff, but I think you could cut some of the the Pennywise things that don't deal with. But that's the why losers. I'm coming. That's why I'm coming to see this movies to see those scenes, know, whether they're consequential or not. That's why I'm buying a ticket. Was like, but that's why I'm I buying don't a ticket. Need that scene in the movie, like, it has nothing to do with anyone. We just need to know, like, it's you know, after the kid gets the gay kid gets beaten to, or whatever, mm-hmm. eaten by Pennywise mm-hmm. at the beginning. That scene's yeah. in the mm-hmm. in the novel. Yep. That is basically like it's still around. It's 2016. And Mike's like, I'm calling him. There's been a string before this kid, and this is the latest one, yeah. and you yeah. got to bring everybody back. So I know, but that's why I'm going. You know, it's but the killer clown movie. I'm going to see the I clown know, this do is where, things. As an editor, you have to sacrifice your. But yeah, you that's not, not the scene you cut. Baby, that's not the scene you cut. <laughs> as we were talking about earlier, cut the scene with um, Bev getting beat instead. You don't yeah. cut the like. There's so many other things you could cut first. Yeah. Well, this movie because it doesn't have Audra to motivate Bill to go down and bring everybody else down to the sewers mm-hmm. and invents this thing with a, a little boy. That he sees yeah. several times and then tries yeah, to save. I don't, uh, it's another problem. I yeah, have. yeah, because it <laughs> I just had a problem the, with the that. story like starts like just going like where the fuck are we now? We're going off to a carnival. Yeah. It's a problem when even the other characters when he's like I got to save the little boy. They're like what boy? What the fuck? Are you yeah. talking? There's a problem when he, no one else even knows. But what isn't that ex- isn't that Pennywise exploiting Bill's whole arc? Yes, yeah, saying but like then they is. deal with it later in yeah. the in the basement scene. Uh, you know, and again, right. I liked once they actually got down in the. Uh, the sewer, I did kind of like the ending of this movie, and I liked the beginning, which was the whole the middle, bringing the everybody back. It's in the middle where it's just mm-hmm. like, now we're going to do a bunch of shit. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I will say I did like, I didn't expect it, but I did like the scene of Stanley at his bar mitzvah basically being like, life is meaningless and pointless. And like, that, that was added a lot of texture to his character, really I did. thought. Like, that be- was a deleted scene from the first movie. Was it really? Yes, it is. Yeah, that makes that makes a lot of sense. But I like a, that he's it's a good scene. <laughs> but I like that he's basically like, I've seen the worst thing that could ever happen and life is pointless and meaningless. Fuck this. Fuck religion and like pieces out yeah. because it makes yeah. that like, yeah. It makes a lot more sense as to why he would kill himself then, right? Yeah. Like, if as a 12, 13-year-old, that was his perspective on life, it's f- kind of a fucking miracle he lived that long. Yeah, you know? no, like, I agree. So that, I was like, I kind of dig that scene. It Even made a lot of sense. it probably wasn't totally necessary, I thought it worked for that yeah, character Yeah, it made sense. Well. It gave that character an arc that mm-hmm. made sense. Yeah, exactly. Which is not something we got a lot in this movie. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> isn't the, the scene where uh, Bill goes to the fair and the kid gets eaten, that was the scene that um, McAvoy suggested for the movie did you guys read this no like that scene wasn't in the movie and then uh james mcavoy was like we need to we need a closure with he wanted closure with the kid Uh because imagine his whole thing with the kid throughout the movie and not having that he wanted closure with that that would be dumber yeah well no uh, okay yeah no that makes sense i thought you were saying like the existence of the kid was his idea no no no. No. just okay all that stuff happened but going to the carnival then that's a good idea on his part otherwise it would have made that kid even more pointless yeah yeah Yeah, exactly i liked the carnival scene i thought the funhouse mirrors was dope i love that um again uh, again girl plates are scary (laughs) scenes that are cool but we don't yeah. need them. We, yeah. Again, yeah. we're just veering off. That's like, camp but that's I'm my threshold like, yeah. for these movies is show me cool clown stuff. You know what I'm saying? So uh, like, <laughs> I want a movie around the cool clown. Stuff. I know because then know. Gary Doberman is delivering what you're asking for. Right, but but yeah. it's but for me like it's it's too much in between the cool clown scenes. You know what I'm saying? Like it's three hours of other stuff. In so you like the, the stuff scene. that we had a problem with. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, I'm coming here to see cool clown stuff. You know? Okay. That's that's my level of enjoyment for these movies. I haven't read the book, so I don't have any book baggage. That's yeah. I don't have any care. Hey, like, I'd be you know. all, I could. Yeah. No, don't say you can put it out of your mind because you can't. If they made a good movie. No, no. no. That's, but see, then you're still comparing it to the book. I mean, yeah. Because you didn't like the first one. Yeah. So it's that you can't put the book out of your mind. I'm going to say some other things later that are that are going to be like that's from the book. <laughs> <laughs> well, speaking of Stanley's death. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, he, uh, he apparently has full recall when he gets the call from Mike and kills himself because that is the way that it has been from time immemorial. He he gets the phone call, freaks out because he knows exactly what they're dealing with mm-hmm. and cuts his wrist mm-hmm. in a bathtub. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But not in this movie. In this movie, fucking Gary Dauberman adds a scene 
at the end where it turns out he has a suicide note that he has sent to everybody where he basically says, I needed to figure out a way to get you all to go back and rally around something. So I took myself off the plane. Well, he board. also said I wouldn't be able to do it. He also said I'm too much of a coward to actually help. Uh, was anybody else severely offended by this scene? Severely offended. Severely offended yeah, by this scene? I was like, severely fuck offended. you. I, yeah. <laughs> severely offended. Really? This, this. Yeah. this is the scene that really made you upset? That, yeah. Well, oh, yeah. Why? why? Because it's, uh, first of all, it's, it's like the martyrdom thing or yeah. whatever that they keep, I'm like, oh, for Christ's sakes. It's but like it just, didn't make a difference. <laughs> Like his martyrdom didn't change anything, I don't think. No, but it adds a thing to <laughs> plot wise, but it adds something to his character that feels like kind of vulgar, at least to me. And uh, but unfair. is that coming from your book attachment? Because no, no, to no. me, I don't like I I that character is so like non present to me that like anything. It's they add, the whole thing. Up, like, it changes the whole like the horror of you know remembering that there's going to be this demon clown thing that we have to deal with. Yeah, right. No, and I, now it's like. Well, I can't do it because I remember the demon clown thing, but I'm also a present enough mind to write you this. I'm like, if you can write that letter, you can figure out some other way to maybe just not go. But the whole point was that he's a coward. That was his whole thing. And he's like, just I'm a coward go. and I can't. <laughs> no, I, yeah. yeah I, I obviously, like I said, I have not read the book, but I, I agree with you. It, it's more impactful if he's just like, fuck, I can't face that clown. Yeah. I'm out. That's like, scary. That's, yes. That the thing has such I, a psychic yes. hold on him that he would kill himself. Yes. yes. Much, that, again. that makes more sense to me. Yeah, I guess I, I did. Like I guess like out of all the yeah. things in the movie, that was not what I was most offended by. So I, I'm surprised mm. you guys were that upset. Also, that. Well, that and Mike's we're putting a positive spin on suicide. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, <laughs> Which I have a movies do, movies do that all the Martyrdom's time. Martyrdom's okay in a movie. I, yeah. Just look sure. at The Last Jedi. It, I was going to say, that's every movie that <laughs> like someone died and they it. had a reason for as it. As long as but, I got a reason yeah, for going out. God, exactly. Good. Damn, no, yeah. I was... We're like in a that. weird time in movies <laughs> yeah. right yeah. now. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, bet, I bet if you like... Man, it might be, even be like a Disney thing where martyrdom happens. Like, which, fucking Iron Man kind of a little bit like that, too. Mm-hmm. Do you think about it? I think if we would looked at a lot of movies that came out in the past five, ten years, it happens a lot. Yeah, it's very strange <laughs> so, and mm-hmm. unusual. It's just um, not always as brutal as slitting your wrists. Strange and unusual. Never mind. I'm yeah. just saying things. No, no, I got you. I got Beetlejuice, you. Beetlejuice, I got you. <laughs> I was there. Yeah. I saw it. Um... Uh, okay, now I've like totally lost the thread. We just, let's just talk oh, about things. Just too. bring up things and we'll, we'll figure it out. <laughs> um, <laughs> oh, what else? Um, okay, question about the book. Was, oh, I cannot, is it Richie? Bill Hader. <laughs> yes, Richie. Richie. Thank Richie, you. Yes. Okay. Um, is he gay and in love with Eddie in the book? No. no. Is that in, just a choice? In the 1990 movie, they allude to it. Do they? And, yeah, there's a line I don't where recall. Pennywise says something like, I know your secret, something, or who you sleep. Yeah, it's Eddie. That's why Charlie I couldn't boy. remember if it was Good. Eddie. He said, yeah, or who he's... you sleep with, oh. is what he says to him. So okay. he threatens to out him, but it's Eddie in the 1991 okay. he threatens to out. So. Yeah, Eddie okay. was, I think, well, he wasn't gay in the in the book, but yeah. there yeah. was he was taunted as being a sissy and all this stuff when mm-hmm. he was in, in mm-hmm. school. Right. And okay. so Pennywise keeps on playing on that. Mm-hmm. Uh, every time that he meets gotcha. I get okay. why they did it for this movie, though, because I think it's a lot harder to, like, if you're scaring adults, right? Uh, well, like, think about what we're scared of as adults. It's really, like, it's it's real life things. Yeah, no, you know I, what I'm saying? I honestly, I didn't have a problem with yeah, that. I no. was just curious if that was carried over from the book or if that was just a choice for this movie. Yeah, when I watched the yeah. 1991, I was actually, I had never caught that before yeah. and never picked yeah, up on it. That. So when I heard yeah. it, I was like, oh, that's interesting. Yeah, like, I don't remember that at all. Like, but if you think about it, I guess, like, as an adult man who's, like, famous and wealthy that like is the scariest thing is to be like outed against your will right so yeah i was and like oh to cool. the screenwriter's credit that does make richie interesting in yes. this movie yes. in a way that he wasn't in the first one because now it gives him an arc yeah absolutely yeah. It, it gives him like something that he's holding on yeah. to where in the yeah. first one and he was ma- like i don't care about anything yeah. you know, it's like, and it, it makes right. it makes sense why he has such a strong attachment to, to Eddie. right well and it's like his his like his Posturing and aggression is a defense mechanism, right? Yes. That reverses all of yeah. that. So he's not just an asshole. He's like a really defensive, sensitive yeah. asshole that has like a, this whole thing, a secret he's hanging on to, yeah, right? Yeah, it definitely yeah. makes sense for this character. So, and surprisingly, like, they yeah. did something right. They, yeah, yeah they nice did. added twist did. that was like yeah. really good. But, and so we're all saying this is great, right? Just do that to all the other characters now. Like, right? just do that to all right? the other Like, uh, they did yeah. it really good for one. And then, so yeah. one out of seven, they got like, right. I, I, got, I got nothing from Bev. I get nothing. I, I, I don't know. Okay, I, I, I was surprised by that because I, I expected, nothing. I mean, Jessica Chastain was like, you know, I was like, I gotta say, I'm sure yeah. Jessica yeah. Chastain is going to be in this movie. I, I was I, like, I, okay, but this movie made yeah. me wonder if she actually is a good actress. I was like, is, is she good? 
Like I was kind of rethinking like how I felt about her. I don't feel like it's movie. her though. It's the character. Yeah, I was give her a whole lot there. Yeah, I think she just feels very flat though. Like it's, she seems like she's at the same level all the time, which is unfortunate because she's one of the coolest characters mm -hmm. in the book, and she's also supposed to be like one of the strongest. And the other part that also gives her nothing to do is we don't have, and this may just be me, we don't have the slingshot. Yeah. Which I missed horribly. Yeah, yeah. Did not, she didn't delivers even the think killing about blow, I, I think, yes. it's, uh, in, the, in the book, right? Yeah. Isn't she the one who actually kills it? Yes. But yeah. isn't the slingshot just when they're kids and when they're adults? In the, in the 1990 movie, they kick it to death. Well, uh, it's not, um, I think, <laughs> and then they pull the heart out. They're kids, but they bring it back in the book. When yeah, they when use the slingshot adults. as adults in the book? Yeah. Yes. Okay, because yeah. in the 1990 movie, they don't. Yes. Um, in this, they use a fire poker. Mm -hmm. Yeah, which, ugh. but I miss, I miss the slingshot, <laughs> and I miss kind of that, because they try and do it with the fire poker. They're like, hey, this kills monsters. But mm -hmm. I, I, I like the idea of um, having that memento from their childhood, which they kind of do in the movie, but to use it, they used it in a way different way in this movie. And so mm -hmm. they're just burning yeah. and doing a ritual. They this had something that felt like they could fight it. And the slingshot, especially with Bev, would have been really good for her in this movie and given the character kind of more of a purpose, because she is just kind of... In this yeah. movie. Well, I guess, but yeah. she, the only thing she's doing is the only thing that, I mean, like I said, Bill gets a little bit of a pass for me because I did like the closure that they gave him with uh, Georgie. Yeah. So it's like, absolutely. Because the whole way through the movie, I'm like, you got to hit this Georgie thing like over the goddamn mm -hmm. head if you're going to make him like good. a central character. But they did it. And, you know, it was kind of like all over the place and then they landed it. And I'm mm -hmm. like, OK, at least there it is. You know, him pushing him under the water like yeah, that. Yeah, I was yeah, like, yeah, yeah. I got fucked. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. Drown your guilt. Get rid yeah. of it. But yeah. in the hand coming back up to like the little kid hand to touch his, I was like, oh, yeah. that's really fucked. Yeah, right? it was dark. It was dark. <laughs> yeah. And then, but Ben and Bev, then basically the thing they have going on is their her your hair is winter fire, my yeah. heart burns there too. All mm -hmm. unrequited love. We don't get the the oh. sex scene between Bill and Bev because Bill has been you know without being without knowing it. I mean, his wife is a spitting image of her. Yeah, and so I think they meet up at the hotel, and that's why I think they're having sex while uh, Mike Mike's getting is getting stabbed. Yeah, yeah. Jesus. Yeah. yeah, but then she does somehow still end up with Ben, and yeah, in the book. because they yell at each other during. I another part of this that I hated was the um, the bathroom, the bathroom yeah, filling yeah. up with blood. Oh, I thought that was cool, and him getting like, sucked into the ground. I did like that scene. I thought it looked cool. Uh, I, I liked that like scene too. Dead. I'm into it. Yeah, I liked it. Yeah, yeah. It was All effective. that stuff. I was like, the, yeah. that was the moments where I was like actually back in the movie. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And me too. It stuck I was, it was with effective. it until they got out of the sewers. And then it all went to shit again with the fucking <laughs> martyrdom suicide letter. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I was I was like that it was trying to do cool looking things, you know? Like I don't know, like I I feel like we see a lot of the same thing, especially like you're saying Gary Dalman writes all the the like the paranormal movies that I won't go see, but you you go see all of them cuz mm. this is your sickness. Yeah. But um <laughs> like I feel like those kind of do the same kind of tricks over and over again. Mm -hmm. And so I I'm like at least they're trying something here, you know? It, even if it just the only purpose it serves is that it looks visually cool, you know? I just thought there's but, there's an over-reliance on CGI, but I always say that. Yeah. And then there's also I think um Muschetti Yes. Muschietti. Muschietti. Muschietti has, I think he's got a, a, a fear or an, a fixation on a distorted, elongated face. Yeah. Oh, for because sure. Because all of his, that's how his like monsters, they, they all have a distorted, that. elongated face. Mm -hmm. I'm like, yeah. that, because that goes back to mama. I yeah. mean, that's just how he yeah. designed stuff. I'm like, well, there was even that, like the end of the Paul Bunyan scene, Pennywise's face. Face stretches yeah, down yeah, his yeah, eyes, yeah, goes yeah, to the side. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, that's what he's yeah. got to like. Yeah. That and there's the painting lady that Stan was afraid of that has the long stretch face. Well, mm -hmm. And the old lady looked like that, yeah. and the leper looked like that. Yep. It's like, yeah. yeah, that's true. You, you may have a thing. It's a style. Yeah. 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 Um, it might be a kink at this point. Did you notice? Because you've all seen the 90s. Mm -hmm. uh, yes. I did. Yeah. The cameo <laughs> appearance. By Ben from yeah. the 90s yeah. one. I, yeah, I saw it online, but I did not know it at the time. Oh, yeah, because when yeah. they cut to him, I'm like, oh, shit, did yeah. they actually get the guy? They did. <laughs> yeah, I didn't notice until afterwards. Yeah. Same. I saw, I was like, oh, he was in it? Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah, no, I, I didn't. Oh, no, yeah. as soon as it popped up, yeah. I was like, I was like hey, that's that guy. him. <laughs> oh, but then he's playing Ben. And they're like, oh, no, it's not Ben. No. Fake out. Ben's but he, he is working at Ben's place. Yeah. 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 It's very funny. Mm-hmm. Well, they're right there. We also get another cameo mm -hmm. in this movie. Did we? Stephen King. King. Stephen King. Yeah. 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 I, would, I, <laughs> I, I, know. I mean, like, it's not as, like, he's done way worse cameos. Yeah. Before, so true. this one I was fine with. I was like, 
Especially because he kept saying, he's like, I have no involvement with this movie. I have no involvement with this movie. He kept saying that on Twitter. And I was like, I know you're full of shit. Like, yeah. I know that's not true. Like, at, the very, be in it. at the very least, you visited the set once. Yeah. If nothing else, you visited the yeah, set sure. once. And, so when, and when I that, believe yeah. they asked him, uh, uh, Muscati said that he basically said, like, what, what what do we need to you know have in it or whatever? And he said, here's a list of scenes. And he said uh, it was kind of like getting a fan's list not the guy who made it like mm. here's the stuff well, he is i want to see in the work. movie yeah <laughs> yeah, yeah. That, so. that, that doesn't surprise me but yeah yeah, yeah. we'll mm-hmm. put you in the movie but we're gonna make fun of how you suck at endings endings yeah mm-hmm. for the entire yep. movie yeah. Yeah. yeah did you that was the trade-off so did we like the ending of this movie you said that you kind of liked the ending did you like <clears throat> the, the, ending? This, the whole sequence and the defeating of it yeah and all the whole that. the whole shebang yeah before the letter yeah well yeah. i didn't like the whole thing with mike Mm-hmm. Right, and yeah. then because I think it's they get down there and they do the ritual, the big balloon comes up. Then they have to split up and go to their each separate. And it just kind of yeah. felt at that point like this fucking thing's never going to end. But I did like what I was seeing there. Yeah, mm-hmm. those individual vignettes, mm-hmm. uh, and then it kind of coalesced to actually fighting it. You did not like this, I take it. I didn't care for it. No, I didn't care for it, it either. No, I th- I found it. the. The the something another thing uh, Muschietti does I've noticed too or at least I think it's him now that you point out the elongated face thing is like a lot of times he'll just shift the proportions on thing just a little bit and it's enough to make it look fucking weird you know what I'm saying like mm-hmm. when Pennywise was like half spider and half clown like the, the arms were really short and they were like swaying back oh, yeah, and forth yeah, yeah, yeah. and that disturbed me I mm-hmm. was like I can't, like the way they were just dead weight swaying around I was like that's disgusting and I hate it like yeah. it, it was like, he reminded me of has anyone seen Wreck It Ralph. Yes. Nope. Yeah. Oh, the clown? Yeah, at, yeah, the, at the, the very king? the king at the end yeah. when he's like half king, half monster. Yeah, that's pretty much it. That's what Man, it is. And they stole it from They stole it from Wreck It Ralph. Ralph. Holy shit. I was like, are you serious right now? Yeah. Yeah. That's pretty much exactly the I same. I was like, thing. oh Jesus. Uh, I did like the dog <laughs> behind the door. I did too. I, I agree with you. I like the little vignettes when they were off, like each doing their own thing. I I, I like that. And the dog mm-hmm. thing made, made me laugh. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I think uh it's, it's, uh, I think it goes on too long. I think it comes down to the editing of this final yeah. thing, which I don't it's think is helping. Editing. It's just, it felt yeah. like We bad should have editing. been there like 45 minutes earlier. Yeah. Or yeah. It really but. was. I think the editing is bad. I don't like, I, I don't like the turn they do with Mike. That just feels like, again, like I said, it made me hate that character. It feels like a writerly turn and not like something that was supposed to happen yeah. at all ever. It was just yeah. like, now we got to explain like. There's an awful lot of talking, and also when their their idea to like if we get him back towards the passage, he'll have to make himself small because they have to abide by the rules of the form they take. And there's an awful lot of talking going on yeah. at that point. It feels like they don't know how to end it, and that's coming through in the actual writing mm-hmm. on screen. So mm-hmm. if we get him to the small passage, he'll be small, and then we can kill him. How? What? It's like they're not they're dumb characters at that point. I don't know. And, well, or and it's their a dumb plan doesn't work. There's I mean, a lot of there's a lot of sudden knowledge. Yeah. And there's a lot of, uh, hey, this can do this now. I mean, yeah. without yeah. any kind of consistency, it's like the whole way through the movie, the it's way like that parameters. I felt, I, yeah, there's no real parameters on what he can yeah. do and yeah. what he can't. Because at the beginning, uh, at the Chinese restaurant, the, you know, everything's going to shit all over the place. Mm-hmm. Things are exploding. And then the waitress comes in and everything's gone. It was a hallucination. But when uh, Eddie gets puked on black goo, he wears that all the way back. Yes. So it's like, yeah. Yeah. is it there or is it not there? Uh, Pennywise is always like attacking people, but never actually like killing. Them. Yeah. Could, I'm like, why I, can't he ever fucking land the, uh, you know, the kill shot? Right? <laughs> yeah. But isn't that part of his whole thing is fucking he's with just him, makes toying it more with fun. Them? Yeah. Like he likes to he fuck didn't. with him a bunch. It's just weird because he, he doesn't like he doesn't do it with anyone ones. else. Yeah. These like are the he, only has, ones he, does it he has full on victims. He kills a little girl. He kills the kid at the carnival and then he just toys with them. Yeah. Yeah. It's odd. It's, yeah. Yeah. Very mm-hmm. odd. Agree. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, yeah. well there that is. <laughs> should we uh should we tell people whether we like this movie or not? Maybe we should. But first, is there anything else? I know. I know. Oh, I feel like it's, I know. I feel like I'm missing oh, stuff. I know. Because uh, it's a long ass movie. It's a long ass movie. movie. All right. We'll Felt save that long. for your wrap. I guess so. Mm-hmm. All right. Do some, short do some thinking. No, no. Put the rest of the stuff in there. Um, but we're gonna read some of your mail first, and then we're gonna go around the table and tell you whether or not you should seek out it. Chapter two. Well, it's basically yeah. Do we recommend it? You've seen it. You've already seen <laughs> yeah. it. So uh, first of all, we're gonna summon our mailman Igor. Bring us the mail. Masters, masters, the mail. I've got the mail. So many letters. Our followers are rising, rising. Why, thank you, Igor. 
Thanks, Igor. He's got some black slime running down the front of him, too. Oh, that's not anything unusual. Yeah. <laughs> that's <laughs> looks a little like it's usually like dried on, like it's been there for a while today. It's like fresh and wet. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Fresh. Yeah. <laughs> He's like it happened undulating. recently. Yeah. <laughs> he undulates. No, is that black slime really there, or are we just imagining it? Oh, no, it's there. I mean, it was really <laughs> <on> <laughs> it. So, There's it's a smell. It's only there yeah. for us. There's yeah. a smell. It's there. Um, so we should tell people how they can join the Freak Show family, how we can read their mail by uh, getting a hold of us on Facebook. Facebook.com slash Saturday Night Freak Show. On Twitter. At Sat Freak Show. By email. Saturday Night Freak Show at Yahoo.com. Or on Instagram at Saturday Night Freak Show. Oh, by the way, MF Mad, the keeper of the wall of fame. If yes. you are, if Good an sir. actor or director is a part of a movie that we've uh, done three times on our show. Mm-hmm. It didn't come out right. If they have been <laughs> in a movie that we have watched them three times, three on, times our on our show, wow. we put them on the Wall of Fame. That's a lot Apparently, of people on that wall, Colin. Uh, well, this is the hall- Hallway of Fame nominee. Okay. Yeah. Neil Crone was uh, Harvey in American Psycho 2, All-American Girl, which we did. But he's also Chief Borton in It and It Chapter 2. Oh, oh okay. okay. Does cool. that cool. count if you're, it's a part one, part it's two? A, I mean... They're two it's, separate they're two movies. movies. They are two movies. This Which, is not the 90s TV. This is yeah, two separate two movies. Films. Henry yeah. Bauer's dad's boss. Oh. Very small part. Very in this. small yes. part. Yeah. Yeah. Very small like part. A hallway. Yeah. Hallway yeah. thing. Yeah, I think he, he was the one that drew his gun on Bowers when he gotcha. washed up the driveway. Yeah. yeah. So I'm like, cheat. There's a cops in this movie? Yeah, for a second. Yeah. yeah for Brief a second. second. Yeah. Uh, Daniel Borden, Vampire, ah. has been listening to some of our past episodes and says, Hey, everyone. Hope you're having a good weekend. The show is entertaining. I enjoy listening. I think I'm going to have to agree to disagree with you on Predator 2. I think if <laughs> Danny Glover was going to go against the Predator, he should have his lethal weapon buddy, Mad Mel Gibson, as his partner. Predator would get to kill Mel Gibson, and Danny Glover would avenge his buddy. I'm I, 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 let's watch that movie. Yeah, I'll I'm watch down that for movie. that. Leave yeah, for sure. Five, Especially so. if Gibson is getting... Ganked on screen. Yeah, let's do yeah, it. I'm so in. Daniel Borden Vampire is disagreeing. He's a disagreeing with me and uh, Sean. Can't remember where Holly stood on the Predator sequels. I don't remember. <laughs> this is, I don't remember it. Like, why were we talking about this? Michaela said uh, Predators is oh, the best. Oh, because uh, I, yeah, I stirred up shit by saying yeah, I, you did. I said, there you go. I said now you got pre- vampires right I said Pred- Predators was a superior Predator sequel. That's what I said. Oh, okay. And Sean and I said, that's heresy. It's yes. Predator, yeah. 2. Predator 2. We also yeah. did it last week with another sequel we were talking about, which again brought up Predator 2. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, about <laughs> it, Chapter 2, Ryan Handsome Jansen mm. writes in and says, is it just as bland as the first film? We'll How let dare you, know. you, sir? We'll let you know. <laughs> Rich Martinez says, hell yeah, I'm definitely watching it this weekend. I can't wait to hear the review on this freak show. You guys kick ass. Well, thanks. Hey, thanks. Thank you. You kick ass too. Yeah. Because you listen to us. Yeah. <laughs> That's all it takes. <laughs> Stephen Hayes writes in and says, if there's a giant spider at the end, is it at least more convincing than the 1990 version? It's a way cooler what spider. That, more convincing? Yeah. I don't know how to answer that well, That, was like a that big, spider was terrible. It that was looked an like shit. Era, like a stop motion a spider. And it was like a foot off the ground. Yeah, like, this one <laughs> gives Pennywise just a bunch legs. of spider legs. Well, they're, 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 they're like crab legs. Yeah, yeah. It, it's a bunch it's of like legs. There's crab. a lot of crab-like no one creatures. Ever, there are a lot of crab creatures in this movie. No one will ever commit to actually ending this movie. Uh, with a spider? Because with, it's stupid. With, with, no, with, with the way with it spider actually ends. And a turtle. Yeah. And yeah. a turtle. <laughs> Fight Did in the cosmos of space. Did you see it? There was like that close-up of the turtle. Yeah, yeah, I saw them. like, I saw that. I I saw that. I was like, when are they going to do it? And then they didn't. So, but for a second, I was like, oh, maybe it'll happen. <laughs> no, that does not. Can you even? How would they? No, no, you, you know what? They might I was be. reading that going like, could you film this? And I'm like, can't I, do it. you can't. No. It, it takes place in the inner space. Yeah. Of are, your mind. It's that. I mean, it's weird. Yeah. No, no, hey, Dreamcatcher no. tries some weird shit like that, man. Dreamcatcher tr- is like, let's go to your mind palace. And that's yeah. like a whole part yeah. of that. But movie, the whole so. ritual of chewed is that you have to basically bite each other's tongues and tell jokes. And the first one who lets go. Right? Like, uh, loses. Yeah. yeah. Bite each other's tongues? Yeah. You and the the person you're fighting against bite each other's tongue. How do you tell a joke when you're biting someone else's tongue? It's fucking stupid. <laughs> if you it's can figure stupid. that one this out. This is why I can't read the book. Because that shit, dumb shit like that in there. Well, it's, it, yeah, it's very cosmic <laughs> at that point. Yeah. Oh, you cosmic? blast okay. it out into the cosmos I'm, and yeah. in the dead See, like I said, and, yeah. I'm here for clown stuff. So, <laughs> uh, Richard Pulfer wants to know, now that it's over and done, I'm curious about how the pacing, not just the scares, compares to the Tim Curry miniseries. 
Um, Maybe that's in wrap-ups. They're both bad in different ways. Yeah, that's, yeah. There you go. Yeah, I don't know. I uh, Yeah, the pacing definitely is an issue in It, it Chapter 2. Um, I, actually, I think the pacing in the first, the miniseries, I preferred more because it was at least kind of structured like the, yeah. the novel. Uh, Michael Piatowski says... It Chapter 2 is such a disappointment. It Chapter 1 was so good. Chapter 2 is way too long. Love the Saturday Night Freak Show. Hey, thanks. Thank thanks, man. Uh, Jacob Kotner writes in and says, I just got out and I absolutely loved it. I feel the le- I felt the length, but it was worth it. After the TV movie, I wasn't sure if anyone could pull off the second half, but this stuck the landing, if you ask me. Need a little bit more turtle, though. I've noticed a common thread across everyone, whether they enjoyed it or not, said it was too long. Literally, everyone yeah, can agree on the long. fact that it's too long. Even people who was like, I loved it. It was way too long, though. Like, yeah. yeah. Yes. Uh, about, uh, was it last week? Alice, Sweet Alice, the mm-hmm. movie we watched. Michael Whitaker says, I've never seen it, but since it's a movie to kick off the Halloween season, I thought I'd share mine that I watch every year. I watched the 1953 sci-fi classic War of the Worlds. It's not very Halloween themed, but the Orson Welles radio broadcast, which I also listened to, was done for Halloween. Yeah. So now I watch it as my yearly kickoff to the Halloween movie season. It's that's a really nice. that's, that's a, a good movie. That's a good. It's a good, good, a good like tradition. I like that. Yeah. yeah. Uh, about the previous week's movie Hell Night, Nerd Geek Speak says, "I <laughs> love the Hell Night Linda Blair episode. I hope to hear more eighty slashers in October for Halloween." Keep up the greatness. That's our Aww, bread and butter, thanks. man. Don't worry. We'll get, it, we'll, there'll be plenty. <laughs> you may be in luck. Michael Whitaker writes in again and says, I went to art school, so I never joined a fraternity, so I can't vouch for the accuracy of how this portrays college life. Yeah, we had a little discussion because I was like, I went to yeah. art school. Well, yeah, we, not, we had a little. discussion is not very close. I, I Like I said, I take movies as documentary. Uh, I mean, no, no. We, we had a little, dis- we had a little and, discussion about right. that. The guy that wrote it, he's like, I went to Brown and fraternities weren't really a thing then. So he literally he just, he's talking about. he literally just made up what he thought no, it would be like. No, yeah. Yeah. They're, they're not like that at all. Uh, yeah, no, they're not. <laughs> well, we were talking not about producer Erwin Yablons. Uh It wasn't Trankus. It was Compass International oh, okay. Pictures that he started. Uh, and they, and uh, Michael Whitaker says, he also gave us Tourist Trap. Oh, yeah. Oh, That's on my list. Oh. That movie is nuts. I've uh, never seen it's it. It's on my list. Okay. Oh. Uh, if it's nuts, I mean, now I'm interested. <laughs> so yeah. Seen it. yeah. Uh, Travis Legler writes in and says that Linda Blair is a very astounding looking woman, but better yet, she's nice in person. Had a friend meet Linda and she was open to joking about Exorcist 2. Her beauty seems to match both interior and exterior. I love when she guest starred in an episode of Supernatural. I I also liked that episode. <laughs> well, Death by Stereo. I'm glad you had a good experience with her. Yeah, I've heard otherwise. So. Yeah, it's true. Death by Stereo says, and now she saves doggies. Yep, she does. That's what she does. And Sarah Ah says, uh, her and her, her and her and Rick James had an intense love affair too. So she's led an interesting life for sure. The pictures are blows my mind. Wild, <laughs> <laughs> blows my mind. Uh, Karate Warrior too. It's still talking about Linda Blair. Said, oh boy. You know I love that 80s hair. <laughs> Savage Streets was badass, and so was Linda. Great soundtrack featuring some uh, AOR by Australian John Farnham's Quiet Ones, but everything he did after that was trash. Hashtag disgrace to the nation. Mm. Uh-oh. Damn. Mm. I watched Savage Streets this week. And? Uh, well, it's from, from the guy who made Friday the 13th Part 5. That guy's a pervert. Yeah. <laughs> it's oh, yeah, sleazy oh, yeah. is off. Uh, like I could not believe it was like Jesus Christ. Yeah. I feel like that's kind of saying a lot coming from you, Colin. Yeah. <laughs> usually, usually dig that is kind of, that kind of. Well, thing. I mean, I dug it, but you know, I mean, I'm still, I can recognize I mean, I it's like every Ooh. single moment. Of it. No, <laughs> no, it's it, it might be across the line. Uh, Tony Genoway said, "I'm glad." Oh, this is we were talking about. I think on that episode. Uh, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood and oh, yeah. Bruce oh, Lee the Bruce thing. Lee thing. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. Tony Genoway says, I'm glad Quentin Tarantino is pushing back against the criticism of his depiction of Bruce Lee and the ludicrous statement by Shannon Lee qu- claiming Quentin flushed her father's legacy down the toilet. This is an attention grab, simple as, and I'm going to rant some because I'm so sick of it in almost every aspect of life now. I'm generally a progressive person, but this vilification of creatives for not being socially correct when portraying characters and or characteristics is absurd and threatens to leave us with a drab and boring material as to not offend anyone ever, which is impossible anyway. I haven't seen yep. it, but my understanding is that that character is not an entirely reliable narrator. Correct. Right. Yeah. He's yeah, telling a story. So it's yeah, and it's, it's like a flashback, right? Yeah. 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 It's yeah. Memory. So yeah. like, but I mean, so, if you Bruce Lee's a public person, right? 
And yeah, I think. No, I'm just saying, I think she's taking it out of context, yeah. is all I'm saying. Yeah. I think she's like, ha- probably hasn't seen the movie and just heard secondhand about no, what she happened. She said she was there and it was uncomfortable to hear people laughing at her dad. But I mean, again, oh, it's boy. her dad. If that's her biggest criticism, and well, boo fucking. I can't yeah, see I, it if it's yeah. your dad, but yeah. that's just one person. It's yeah. like, okay. Tru- yeah, truthfully, if, if it was my dad, I might feel the same way, Tru- truly. Mm-hmm. But. It's not that bad. Like, there does seem to be this kind of like weird sainthood around Blue- Bruce Lee, though, that yeah. like, you can't ever speak ill of him or mm-hmm. it's like the worst yeah. thing yeah. ever. And I don't really get that. Because he's dead. He can't defend himself. Well, but, I suppose it, yeah, it doesn't matter to other people. Yeah, exactly. That's what I'm saying. Like, the, yeah. But like something specific about him is like he's elevated to a level of like yeah, untouchability and, and people, that makes no sense. Yeah. And people ref- uh, reference when he made the statement that he could kick uh, Muhammad Ali's ass. Yeah. And like, well, he kind of is. He kind of does have that attitude that he can kick ass. Yeah, and like, it's like, well, like, I mean, I, like I said, I haven't seen it, but like he might like he wasn't the most humble dude. So no. I don't know where this idea comes from that he was this like saintly, well-balanced person that had like that wasn't cocky well, that was at all. all. That's not true. Whole like philosophy yeah, was, uh, right. you know. Yeah, um, I don't know. I but I mean, you. that's the thing. The movie's not about Bruce Lee. We know, <laughs> yeah. we know his philosophy. We watch Circle of Iron. That's right. Yes. Yeah, that's right. Of that's right. Circle of Iron. Oh, oh no. geez. Oh, that man. That's a nice segue. <laughs> Ultimate work, Wolf King listened to our Circle of Iron review and said uh-huh. it's a hollow review. He misspelled it hollow, but he said. <laughs> Oh, if Petty Colin is out. That's right, because he says if you don't know anything about a topic, keep your opinions to yourself. What? About Does he know that podcasts review? are literally just people telling their opinions? Yeah, so that's why podcasts exist. I know. It's like, this is the guy that Tony Genoa was talking about. And yeah. uh, he also says David Carradine was never Bruce Lee's student. Oh, well, he apparently misidentified what that. Do, yeah, I want to know what show. he I think. What he I think I'm pretty sure we all, I said, I think maybe. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty sure that's how that came out. I, you're, yeah. you're a very hollow person. I, I'm I, very hollow person. I, I'm going to say, uh, I'm going to disagree with that part specifically because I said that that movie reaffirmed my agnosticism. That's a pretty deep uh, connection I had with that movie. Yeah, what, it, is, what it, does he think that we don't have knowledge about? Well, but that movie reinforced my belief that there is no God. That's a pretty deep thing to take from a movie. <laughs> that's, we, yeah. that's a pretty deep thing. Yeah. People who knew that Circle of Iron was like a holy text, you yeah. know, that people uh, can't really talk hold. ill of it. Apparently. Yeah, apparently not. <laughs> Damn, all right. Um, Sean, so, you really poked the bear I on that so. one. Good job, Sean. Uh, Way to go. Did also mention Sean's there's monkey opinions, people in that movie? Yeah. Sean's opinions are his own and do not represent <laughs> a those guy tries to dissolve his show. dick in oil in that yeah, movie. Yeah, I mean, we're taking I, it that I seriously. What this feels about that. Yeah. I, I stand by everything we all said on that episode. Absolutely. Indeed. So that brings us to it, chapter two, and whether or not you should see it. So we're going to go around the table and tell you if you should see it starting with colin colin what did you think about chapter two of it um i mean you know i was trying to balance out here some of the good things and the bad things because it's not a uh, it's not a completely unworthwhile experience i think it is hobbled by i mean number one you know i was sitting there today i'm like man what am i going to recommend the movie because i think as a horror movie and the fact that I was not anxious at all. I mean, this is the thing. You expect suspense and scare. Does that ever shots. happen to you? Are you completely desensitized? Has there been a horror movie this year that you felt anything? I was other than <laughs> anger at like this Do sucks. You feel kind of, yeah. I was uh You emotionless unsettled. rock you. No, no. I, I was I was very unsettled by Midsummer, I think was one that I you know, that experience, like uh hereditary, uh mm. still stays with me. Um but yeah, I mean, as far as like shocks and stuff, I mean, yeah, I mean, when I see, I do see things that make you jump. Yeah. I mean, if it's orchestrated well, it makes you, mm-hmm. it makes anybody jump. Mm-hmm. Uh, but nothing made me jump in this song. Like, hey, man, it's a horror movie. Does that mean it's a fail? And then I was thinking, and I said it here tonight, like, I like a lot of those Nightmare on Elm Street movies. I love them even. I acknowledge they're not really necessarily great movies, but I love those goddamn things. And I wouldn't say that I, outside of the first one, ever really found them frightening or suspenseful or anything. This is a very cool. good analogy, Colin. That's right. a very good <laughs> you know, way. Of, very yeah. cool. Well, so that's why yeah. I like horror. Horror right. is sometimes just cool. It's cool fantasy horror. And we have a gigantic budget fantasy horror movie mm-hmm. that doesn't completely suck. Yeah. I'm going to call that a win. Yeah. Right? I, I yeah. agree with you, Colin. I totally agree with you. On that. That's a good way of looking at it. I think. <laughs> right. Colin, I'm really proud of your perspective right yeah, now. Honestly, Colin, Colin, you were like right on with this one. I think, you know, like, well, I mean, but saying that I do have a lot of, I mean, like I said, I think mm-hmm. my favorite version of it is the book. 
You sure. Know? Mm-hmm. Sure. Uh, yeah, it's valid. But that's to be expected. I think I like uh, it and it chapter two better than I like the original TV miniseries. I would you know prefer to go back to these ones. Yes. But I think they did make changes that they couldn't uh, completely back up. You know, it's like if you're going to, I mean, cause I, I would have been ruthless. I would have cut all pretty much all the kids stuff out. It, it maybe yeah. use it sparingly, you know, for to illustrate something that we missed the first time around. But I mean, I would have cut most of that out. I would have even cut some of the, you know, like I said, the, the Pennywise stuff that didn't have anything to do with the kids or the, the adults down. I would have liked to have beefed up, you know, like what the adults, uh, you know, just to get to have a better sense of them. Um, I mean, I think uh, Muccietti, Muccietti, Muschietti. Muschietti, thank you very much, <laughs> is a uh, better than average director for this kind of thing. And that's why he's going to, you know, now he's okay. He made the Avengers of uh, of horror movies. So <laughs> that's fair. Yeah, and yeah. I guess that's why I figured that they went for the three hour mark. It's like now movies can be these big epic things because you're competing against television. That's what it actually is. I was thinking about this. It's they they thought like, well, in TV, right, if you were adapting it, it could just go on and on and on and on for, you know, and so they Seasons. shoot and they shoot and they shoot mm-hmm. and then they kind of pack it all down because they're like, that's what audiences want now is this big expansive narrative where I'm on the opposite side of that going like most TV series are like too long. I want to tell you, listener, mm-hmm. I may have brought this up on the show before. You want to see, you think that like eight episodes is like good enough for a television. I'm like, no, it's even padded. Fucking Deadwood, right? Had a movie that was two hours. That was basically season four of that show. Mm -hmm. And they did it all and like had a perfect balance between all the fucking characters and storylines that were left dangling from season three in two hours. After seeing that, I'm like, all you other fuckers are just lazy and don't want to do the work. <laughs> it's like, this is how you hone and write to fucking perfection, you know, to get your story told two hours, boom, done. Uh, this could have been shorter. Yeah. There's a lot you could uh, cut out of it. But again, I was, I did enjoy maybe the first 45 minutes and I liked the last 45 minutes and in the middle was somewhere that it, you know, it's kind of meandered all over the place. And it never really lost me, but it did feel long. And so I'm going to hold that against it. But I would say that you should check out It Chapter 2. It is the big horror movie event of uh, 2019, I believe, right? Unless I'm forgetting something. No, see, no that's it. It's yeah, not Child's it. Play. No. No, so, no, no, no one saw that. Uh, except me. Um, I'm a little sad right now. It brought me down. <laughs> so I'm going to say, yeah, check out It Chapter 2. Holly, what would you think? Um, yeah, I think I think you nailed a lot of it, Colin. I'm I've been really fifty fifty on this one, and I went back and forth. Like, am I going to recommend it? I'm not sure because there was parts that I really did enjoy, and we talked about. I'm not going to go back over the parts that I liked. We discussed that already, but there were parts that I really did not care for. There were parts that I really liked. There were parts that made me really angry. But I agree with you. Like it. It like it gave us it gave us some really great horror moments, you know, whether it scared me or not. Like there weren't many. There was like nothing really that scared me, honestly. Like I thought that there was some creepy stuff, but it it doesn't have to always scare you. Just the fact that it gave us some really great quality horror moments. Like I thought some of the effects were really fantastic. I thought visually like it was a pretty fantastic movie. Um yeah, I th- I think I am going to recommend it chapter 2. I think just like you said, we got a pretty a pretty decent horror movie and it was big budget and I think that's something to celebrate. Um and I I thought it was entertaining. You know, I I did uh, like everyone else it was way too fucking long and I kept looking at my phone like thinking when's this going to end. But I enjoyed more than I didn't enjoy. So, I think yeah, I think everyone should check out it chapter 2. Sean um i colin that was pretty succinct and right? uh, pretty much <laughs> nailed it um i'm just going to disagree with you on how where you ended up um i saw this movie twice um i think i told everyone here uh the second viewing is better um uh well i wasn't uh i was egregious after the first viewing of this movie <laughs> um it gets better on the second viewing but and i think i said this about uh two years ago when we watched the first hit um it's just not for me i don't know what it is um, I think I'm going to be the odd man out cause I'm pretty sure everyone's going to go see this and, and it's probably going to be the biggest, uh, knock its own record out for being the biggest horror movie, uh, ever. Um, but like we said too long. Um, I don't like, 
I don't know. I don't like a lot what they did with this. It's just not for me. Um, I'm I'm not going to recommend it. Um, I feel like I do with uh, with like Rob Zombie's Halloween Two. Uh, first, I hated it. Now I just don't care, and that's where I'm at with it. And I love two. that movie. So yeah, that says a lot about our taste. There we go. Yeah. There it is. Yeah, I, I've gotten to a place where I'm just like I don't care anymore, mm-hmm. and I think I'm already there with it. Chapter two. I don't care anymore. I'm I'm done talking about it. So I'm is glad it, this is it. Is it is it a case where sometimes a book just does not translate to screen? Like maybe this is unfilmable. Is, is that you know? what it is? Maybe because it I've is. been obviously I don't know, but I've been wondering mm-hmm. that. This I mean it might. Well, th- there is no there is. You can do it. I think you can do it. Yeah. But you're never going to do it straight book. Like we said, we talked about the ending. Mm-hmm. That'll never end up in any of any version yeah. that they make. But I think there is there's enough there that this is it's possible. I've always said this should be like a 10 episode miniseries and I think that is the best way that they could do this. Ooh, got a question. Sorry, this just came to me. What's up? So you read the book. Yeah. How, uh, like, did you miss the, the rainstorm and the flood of Derry? Yeah, and the Derry like, is destroyed. Yeah, by the because it is psychic, it's linked to the, the yeah. it. And so it's raining all through the end of the movie because basically the rainstorm that happened 27 years ago yeah. happens again. And then when it dies, the I mean, this like, huge flood happens. Yeah, there's a, it's a. The standpipe, standpipe yeah. tips over, tumbles into the town. Everything gets flooded, and the water comes down and like destroys. That was everything. Stephen King said that was one of his must haves. Oh and, really? Yeah. Oh yeah, because that whole place it. is destroyed. That's the other thing I kind of to me that I missed in this movie. I uh, that it is the town. It's connected. Yeah, it connected to because we don't we barely see anybody else in this town. If you think about it, we're with the losers and we don't run into anybody at all. Yeah, we like run this, into like the guy who people. runs the pharmacy and Mrs. Kazbrack and yeah. like but, well, I, Mrs. Kirsch. I Mrs. Kirsch but Mrs. Kirsch is like it. Like mm-hmm. she's it incarnate. I'm talking right. about like people being affected by it. Like the lady who wasn't there in the first one, the lady who saw Georgie or left the front porch and went in like just the its connection to the town, I think, could have been. Uh, I would have liked to have felt in this movie. I didn't. Uh, there's a lot of things I wish they would have done with this. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, but yeah, that's it. I, uh, I looked into the deadlights of this movie. I saw how I was going to die. <laughs> and it's if I have to watch this movie for a third time. So I do not recommend. <laughs> You've been Chapter sitting on that two. for weeks. Huh? I have. I yeah. thought about that like yeah. two weeks ago. I'm like, I know the perfect way to end this. Yes. So there it is. Uh, I will uh, probably never watch this movie again. I'll say that. Uh, Colin, I think that your Nightmare on Elm Street analogy is especially appropriate for me because, like I said, I'm coming for the clown and the clown scares. And I like, especially with those Nightmare on Elm Street sequels, you're just going to see Freddy Krueger and his quips and how he's going to kill people, right? Like, you're just going to see what they're going to do. And that's why I go watch these. But I'm like, what is what, like, is Bill Skarsgård going to look his eyes in two different directions, like on his own, not CGI again, things like that, you know? So that's why what I go to these movies for. I have no book attachment, I have no previous attachment at all. I'm just going. See cool clown stuff. Mm-hmm. But that being said, there's too much in between my cool clown stuff in this movie. Like very true. Um, and is there so a clown tattoo coming. Probably. I honestly, feel like yeah. I probably. Feel like it, I feel like there's one coming. Yeah, because like I, I thought that first movie was like a perfect movie. I love it. I, that. It, I it is a perfect it. movie. Yeah. And so going into this, I was like, there's no way they can make two perfect movies. I was yeah, like, it's just, it's not possible. You can't follow that up. And I was like, this one's way more complicated of a premise in the first movie. So I was like, there's just no way it's going to be as good. Uh, I'm going to level with you guys though. I got really baked before I watched this movie. <laughs> so I definitely recommend watching under the influence is <laughs> dope. Like that's probably why my heart monitor freaked the fuck out because I had like a stoner's heart rate for a decent chunk of the movie. And then, you know, you're a little, you're always like two seconds behind when you're high of what's actually happening. So yes. that's why jump scares work really well. Like, um, and it's just, it's a really good movie to watch uh, under the influence of something for sure. Um, and especially because you can totally zone out during the scenes that don't matter and you didn't miss anything. So yeah, uh, I didn't point. go to the bathroom during this movie because I didn't want to miss anything, but right. you totally can. There are plenty yeah. of opportunities you can go to the bathroom in this yeah. movie and be totally fine. Um, did you guys notice the score was like non-existent? In this non-existent. Movie? Yeah. The first one had a really good score and Pennywise had a really good theme that would play yeah. and they didn't even use it in this movie. Like they used it like once. Yeah. But, yeah. Yeah. I think that like, I agree with what Colin said that like it's, there are enough 
good things about it to count it as a win. Yes, I and agree. I it it's disappoint. It's a little disappointing. It wasn't better, but I just don't think it would be. It's possible to make two movies that good back to back, especially. And I think that uh, I have you, know, you could have done it. They just didn't do it. I yeah, I know. <laughs> I mean, we just talked about all the ways they yeah. could have. Yeah. You know, she's saying the chances of it happening. That, yeah, yeah, I just yeah. knew. I was like, the odds are not in favor of this being as good yeah, as the first for one. sure. So, um, it's really like they really did Richie really well. And uh, Bill Hader really did a good job. But I think the movie, I think the editing, I think the the direction, the way it shot, everything definitely favors that character more than everyone else. He got the best edits. He got the best everything. And so it's unfortunate that the characters are treated so differently in that way. Mm-hmm. Um, but definitely go check it out and tell us what you think. I'm curious. I'm curious what our listeners think. I might be, yeah. I think it might be pretty divisive. Sounds like it already. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we'll probably find out on mm-hmm. next week's uh, yep. episode. We'll read yeah. your, your mail from that. When they all tell me I'm wrong. Yeah. <laughs> Sean, no, you're it wrong. sounds like, because uh, even tonight we had some that were. Uh, yeah, I think it's going to be a mix. It's going to be a mix. Pretty divided, but I yeah. think, like you said, we're going to hear a lot of, uh, I love that it. it's long. Yeah. yeah. It's yeah. Too long. So yeah. It does not need yeah. to be that long. Yeah. Edit, 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 edit. Yep. Embrace the. Yeah, what happened? Embrace the edit. Like it used to be, right? This is me, old man uh, Collins. <laughs> yeah. Uncle right? Collins here. Like, it yeah. used to be the movies had basically, here was your idea, and every scene basically held up that idea, mm-hmm. right? Every scene got you to the right. ending. Now it's like scenes just kind of go off and do shit, and we're like, yeah, we just like hanging out. Yeah. A little hangout scene. This is a hangout scene. Yeah. And, like, but it has nothing to do with getting us to the end. <laughs> I do <laughs> wonder though if how much like Infinity War and Endgame influenced the making of this movie, you know? Cuz they were like, well, they did it and it made a billion dollars. You know, they made a 3-hour they made two 3-hour movies that were the same story and yeah. it made a billion dollars. So I think they were like, fuck it, just do, make it make it as long just, as you want. I just you don't know? understand like that shouldn't be a goal. But that's how but they're all competing with each other. So that's how they think though. That's you how know? you know it's a big movie yeah. if it's like, oh my god, it's like two and a half oh, hours. Yeah. That means it's an epic oh, movie. Exactly. Picture. Can we yeah. go, exactly. can we like, go back to an hour twenty? Yeah. Like mm-hmm. can we yeah. make that movie? That's, mm-hmm. why I, yeah. that's another that's why I love the eighties. It's like we're in here for an hour and twenty six yeah. minutes. Because we're out. that's yeah. all you need. We get mm-hmm. that was, yeah. the bad guy gets shot at the end and two seconds later there's credits. credits. Yeah. 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 Any done. longer and make it a mini series. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, well, I think because I think that's, that's where everything I think went. that's yeah. the thing. I think now f- movie filmmakers are competing with video games and they're competing with yeah. TV and these narratives in both television mm-hmm. and video games just kind of like ramble, mm-hmm. you mm-hmm. know. Yeah. But I suppose they do in novels too. In novels, you also have time to ramble. I suppose sure. movies were the only thing that really had like a ooh, hour and a half, mm-hmm. you know, yeah. an hour and a half, two hours max. And now they're just now breaking it's out like, of that. Yeah. Now three hours max. I think also is because they're trying to get people to the theater, and they're like, "Well, we want to make it worth your while, mm-hmm. so it's going to be two and a half, three hours." Yeah. They have to you're with paying your couch. like twenty yeah. bucks for this, right. so we you're going to get really your long. money's worth. We are really close to them bringing. The we're really close to them bringing back like a break at movies, an intermission. An intermission. Yeah. Yeah. Honestly, please. we're really close. I, I need it. Please right? Give me I could have used it. Yeah, I could go refill my snacks. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, I'd be all for it. For yeah, let's that, do it. That's all, like that's a night out. Then that's yeah. show, like show me the dancing hot dog. If yeah. you're gonna <laughs> make, if you're gonna make it three hours, give us a fucking break. Yeah, right, an overture that of the yeah. Benjamin yeah. Wallfish Wallfish score. Yeah, you can show it. some commercials if you want. Like, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Put Maria Menounos back up there. Yeah. And let her tell me, talk to me yeah, about some stuff minutes. again. Yeah, flicker the lights yeah. when it's time to. Oh, I'm yeah. saying. Wow. Yeah, make it a thing. Yeah, yeah. Bring it back. Have some ceremony to it. Yeah, exactly. Bring it back. Make it an event. Yeah. That's right. They already have lounge go. chairs now, and a bar. Now we're just encouraging them to make five hour movies. This is what we're doing right <laughs> well, now. Well, they're going to do it anyway. Yeah. 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 Come That's on. What it is. You just go to the movies all day. You mm-hmm. sit there and watch, like, it's a binge. Mm-hmm. Okay. All right. Uh, Before we make this a three hour podcast. Yeah. 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 Well, next week we're going to be watching a movie that's chosen by Sean. What are we watching next week? Uh, all right, I got convinced that it's Friday the 13th next week. So we will watch a Friday the 13th movie. We're going to watch Friday the 13th part eight Jason Takes Manhattan. All right, all right, all right. All right. I'm a, let's do I'm it. I'm in. I think this will I'm be so fun. Well, now I'm curious yeah. what the it was movie be we five. Were, we I'll tell you. After. I'm sure. I'll I'm tell sure after. it'll come back. You know. <laughs> all right. Uh, so Friday Thirteenth Part Eight. Jason takes Manhattan. That's next week. Even though you're going to be listening to it. Yeah, uh, the, the week, week after. after. It's this is for us. This yeah. is, this <laughs> well, is our, this they is can time. listen to it again December Friday the Thirteenth. So yeah. there you go. Just yeah. say yeah. Save that episode for then. Wait two months and then you'll get there. All right. Well, that's next week on the Saturday Night Freak Show. And until then, the basement is going dark.